Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Hallelujah. Okay, yeah, they did. There you go. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout today. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, you can sing better than that. That's a scary way to sing right there. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told. Do I know this song? Victory today is mine. That victory is. I told. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, we need Elvis here. Come on, somebody. Get some rhythm in this place. I told Satan, get thee behind. Listen to me. If you're not addressing the evil, if you're not talking back at the snake, then that's a big, that's a big, that's a big no no. You're being pushed around. You're a pawn on the chessboard. You're not meant to be a pawn. You're meant to be the king. Yes. You're meant to put the devil in checkmate. Yes. But if you just, if you're not responding, I respond to anything. If I'm watching television and a, and a commercial comes on and says, every 40% of men over 60, you know, you're not talking, you're not talking to me. I'll talk right back to the television. You're not talking to me. You can't let the devil sow free contaminated seed. Yeah. 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 Come on, say contaminated. The, the Bible says in Peter, what, there's a seed that corrupts and there's a seed that's incorruptible. Incorruptible. And when you get contaminated seed, like there was on Noah's Ark, there was only eight people, but there was bad seed on the ark. Because when those things, where'd the giants come from? Where'd the Nephilims come from? So there is already bad seed. Bad seed will carry with you all through your life. From your parents, what you inherited. You've got to fight that. How do you fight bad seed? Well, you don't fight evil all your day. You plant good seed. The only answer for bad seed is good seed. The only answer for corruptible seed is incorruptible seed. I mean, that's the answer for memories. That's the answer for behavior. That's the answer for really getting to where you're dreaming of. And come on, you're having so many birthdays, you're not counting your birthdays. Right? I mean, you have, you have to get a bigger cake just to handle the candles. Come on, say amen. <laughs> right? You have too many candles. you got to really understand time is sweeping by you. You weren't born again to be a spectator. Only, spectator only. Of course, you're, you're, you know, we're all, we all are learning, ever learning. I have signed up to be a full-time learner. I love learning. I learned from your doctor yesterday, your doctor, G. <laughs> Jean. I've been practicing that all night. Come on, somebody. <laughs> no, that's I never was intended. This guy is brilliant, what he has here. And, and I just want to say, if you have never availed yourself of these facilities, you know, for treatment, I mean, don't ever think you're grieving the Holy Spirit because you're getting help in the natural. The scripture's filled with, you know, the balm and Gilead and the oil and the wine. And then in Revelation, anoint my eyes with eye salve. So it's all through the scripture. And, and Paul traveled with Dr. Luke. And so don't ever apologize. It doesn't affect the anointing. The anointing is not fragile. He's sensitive, but he's not fragile. Come on, say the anointing. The anointing. Is, is sensitive, sensitive, but he's not fragile. It's not fragile. If he was fragile, then he couldn't go into dark places. He couldn't go into the casinos and into the brothels. And, and so he's able, well able to do that. Now, sensitive, you know, yeah, he, he doesn't like, the thing that grieves him the most is that you don't go to get help quickly. Mm. Not your sin. Mm. Right. He's not shocked of anything you did or ever will do. Amen. He's shocked that you don't go get help quicker. Mm. Oh. 
But you don't turn to the light quicker. Why would you let that thing cook in you for three days, three months, three years? It says in 1 John 2, 1, he's a, he's a propitiation. Say propitiation. propitiation. Say it three times. You now have tongues. See that? You now have tongues. <laughs> the propitiation means he's not only forgiven you for things you've done, but for anything you ever will do. Now that could give you, that could give you a, a freedom to do wrong things. It's not meant to do that. It's just trying to expand to you how big the love of God is. He's got you covered. Yes, yes, yes. Come put your hands up all over the place today. Come on, say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I thank you that you got me covered. And I need you. I don't want to ever think that I outgrow you. I never outgrow my testimony. I'm forever reminded where I was when you found me. How long it took to get me where I am today. It was not a whole lot of me. It was a whole less of me. And all of you. I'm here today. You have worked overtime with me. You have forbeared me. Tolerated me. Long suffering with me. And I declare today, I'm a brand new person. Inside and out. And getting better by the day. Glory to glory. And ready to pass it on because of who you are and what you did in me and now what you want to do through me I give you all the praise come on give God a big shot for that can you do that all my life you've been faithful and all my life you've been good so Put your hands up and sing it. Oh, all my life you have been so, so good. And every breath that I am I will sing of the goodness of God. And I will sing. And I will sing of the goodness of God. Give him one more praise. Can you do that? And you may be seated all over the place here this morning. Boy, last night, did you learn anything last night? Did you, I'm just curious. What did you learn? Somebody tell me what you learned. Just shout it out. What did you learn? Somebody tell me what you Raise your hand. Tell me what you learned. Oh, I like that. That'll go, that'll travel your whole life. Your what? Your fullness speaks for you. Your fullness speaks for you. Love it. Good, good, good. What's that? Surrender. Surrender. Take your turn now. Don't get too pushy. Don't turn into a mob. Please don't do that. What was the last one over here? Oh, that's a good one. Boy, that, see, that one there t keeps you out of deceit. And that one there will answer a lot of questions why things are still happening in your life that you don't want to happen. Okay, it's very, very important that you know more than you believe. See, if, if you really believed everything you knew, listen to me, you, you would be tithing even when you weren't supposed to tithe. If you believe that God was increasing your seed, I mean, you know it. I mean, it's been preached. It's been severely abused. We know that. But don't let somebody who abuses it destroy the principle for you. Amen. You can't do that. I mean, it's been it's probably about one of the most abused promises in the Scripture. And everybody's after your money. Everybody's after your money. Well, you know, it, it's not true that everybody is. Some of the wrong people are. Or some of the people that think that's the way they get rich, right? Is off of your money. But the truth of it is, is there's no institution on the planet that is there to give you money. 
Banks are meant to take your money. The banks, well, see, we think money is in the bank. No, Peter found money in the fish. Well, what, no, just think about it. What was God saying to Peter? It's anywhere I want it to be. It's anywhere I want it to be. So you got to really, if you really want to prosper, be in health as your soul, a renewed mind is what a prospering soul is. It's getting your mind renewed Amen. to different principles Thank you. than what you have. But you can't be afraid of people that are going to abuse everything. They're going to abuse healing. They're going to abuse worship. There's people that worship, worship. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's some people, if you don't sing their song Sunday morning, it's like their day's ruined. Yeah. <laughs> All they had to hear was the word of God, you know? Because you didn't, why didn't you sing my song? There's people that worship, worship. Mm -hmm. So any, you know, he, he's, a, he's a dark angel. He's an angel of light. He don't care. You don't care if you get to heaven because of drugs or you die because of drugs or you die because you eat too many pork chops. He don't care. <laughs> he just wants to take you out, take your influence out. Adam had authority, Eve had influence. Mm -hmm. Say that Adam, Adam. had authority, had authority. Of, the of the whole garden. But Eve, but Eve. Had, influence. had influence. Who won? Influence overpowered authority. So, you know, we're all called to be influencers. Mm -hmm. We may not all be inventors. We may not all be movie stars or basketball players or models for Vogue or what, all of that. We may, you know, chances are we won't. But we can be where we are. We can influence our sphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every one of you here have a sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. There's people in your circle that you, that's who you're assigned to. You can throw prayers to the president. You can throw prayers to your favorite movie star. You can, you can do all of those things if God gives you that burden. But your responsibility is where your shadow falls. Learn who's in your shadow. That's where there's grace for them to be saved and healed, delivered, come to church. But those are the people we stay away from. That's interesting. We want to go reach the lost. We want to go. Well, because when you get the people in your shadow, you're more accountable to be more vulnerable for who you are. It's true. It's true. Where you're not ashamed of Jesus. You're not ashamed of, because they're going to say, well, if you're still, if you're witnessing to me, and I know you still swear, I know you still smoke, and then you're in, well, no, see, then, then they need a revelation on that God's bigger than smoking and drinking and swearing. He don't save us because we're good. God says, man, I can, I, I'll probably take me 10 years, but I'm going to work on you. Uh, maybe 40 years. Come on, somebody, say 40. <laughs> so God comes, into, God comes into your life with a whole remodeling, you know, reconstruction plan that begins the moment he hits the front doors of your life. And he's long-suffering. I mean, he's, there's, you, have to have, you have to have confidence in the Holy Spirit, connecting you to places and people and the timing of it all. Because you'll be surrendering to that all of your Christian life when you find out why not this timing? Why not this, the right people haven't showed up yet? Mm -hmm. Why not this, you haven't put the past in your rear view mirror yet? You know, so there's all of these basic things that are just with you because we get busy going to church, we get busy raising children, we get busy with our full-time job. You know, so it's very difficult sometimes to lock in and understand which area of our life God is working on. It's your job to do that. Your job isn't to solve all of your life's problems, but your job is to what, stay in the now. Come on, say, stay in, stay in the now. If you stay in the now, your blood pressure will be better right off the bat. Seriously. Your migraines will be, they'll disappear. A lot of your issues, a lot of heart, be less heart attacks. Just staying in the now moment. When David looked at Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, I love what he said. He said, this day God has delivered you into my hands. What was he saying? Today it's not the bears, not the wolves, it's not women. Today you're my problem. You, you're, you're it. He's being, to, you're my challenge for the moment. If you, don't, if you make all challenges equal, you're going to get kicked around. You're going to understand what issue is it right now that God wants you aiming your faith at. 
Faith needs a target. God don't drop power aimlessly. He wants a target. He wants you to give him a target. Bartimaeus said, it's my eyes. Come on, somebody. It, it's important that you just don't throw stuff up and, well, God's going to do something. He wants, he wants to know, well, why don't he know? Why don't he just do it? He wants you so much more involved than you want to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to be involved with your phone bill. You want to be involved with your cell phone. You want to just put your face and in that cell phone. I mean, I travel so much, and I'm everywhere that I go, no matter what country that I'm in, people are glued to the phone. It's just incredible, young and old and rich and poor, black and white and red and yellow. I mean, they're just, a, they're glued to that phone. They don't, they're just, life is passing them by. Mm -hmm. On the airplane, just boom, boom, boom. Headphones, boom, 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 boom. God can't even get our attention to assure you that help is on the way. Yeah, yeah. It's sad whenever you can close your eyes right now. If, I, if you wanted to, you could close your eyes and hear Elvis. But you can't close your eyes and hear the Holy Spirit. I'm just to be a little practical with you. We're going to get into some good scripture. I'm not going to let you get me off track like last night. I'm not going to let you do it. <laughs> but you have, way more, you have way more available to you than what you're walking in. And you've got to quit thinking, I'll get to that, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. You've got to quit pushing everything, you know, into the future. That's what Martha said. If you, you know, I know someday my brother will rise. She had, they had, she had faith for the past. If you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. Or I know he'll be healed at the resurrection. That's where most people live. That's good. They have faith for the past and faith for the future. But they're never in their now moment. Now moment. Come on, say my now moment. My now moment. See, stay in that. I, I, we'll come back to that. Maybe a little bit later we can talk what does that really, really mean. Because I want to get into something this morning that is, I think will be practically helpful for you. And uh, let's go to Luke chapter 18 in your Bible. If you have that with you, we're going to get into the worksheet here today. I do have trouble staying to a worksheet. I think you know that by now. <laughs> and, um, you know, my primary function is to get into people to sense. And last night, what I sensed here was so overwhelming. Um, I said Luke 18, correct? How many have a Bible? Let me see. How many of you brought a Bible this morning? Anybody? How many have your wife's Bible? That one really works. <laughs> Those are the best Bibles. They don't have to carry it. You don't have to know anything about it. You just kind of look over on your wife's Bible, and there it is right there. Um, I want to talk this morning about breaking the yoke and what it takes to really break the yoke. You know, Isaiah 10, 47 says, then the anointing will break the yoke. The yoke is a place of restriction. You can have a yoke that's keeping you from being healed. You can have a yoke that keeps you from prospering. You're working harder, getting nowhere. No, I mean, I mean nowhere, I mean nowhere, but I mean you're not advancing the way you would like to. You're not getting any deeper in your love walk. You still don't like certain people. You still don't like, you know, you're still critical. You just can't get past all of those fleshy things that really sandbag. Come on, say sandbag. <laughs> sandbag your progress. We don't have a whole lot of time to get where we want to go. You know, the old movie uh, Hombre by Paul Newman. Uh, when you're filled with the Spirit, you can be watching, not, any, not evil or dirty, but there's a lot of things you can, the Holy Spirit in you will quicken something and bring life to it. He's, he's, he's a resurrecting Holy Spirit. Amen. There's not too much a billboard that I don't see that something isn't quick and it's, you know, where he converts evil to good, mm -hmm. dirty to clean. But in this Paul Newman movie called Ombre, Paul Newman was the lead character, of course, and he was looking for some people to help him hold off the bad guys. And he said to this lady, can you, 
can you handle a gun? She says, give me a gun. Da -da 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 -da. He looked at this man. He said, come on, can you help me? And he guy said, here's what the guy said. And I saw this movie, I don't know, 25 years ago, but it was quickened to me because now I can say I understand, I understand it. The, the man looked at Paul Newman and said, I can't do a gun. Paul Newman says, well, are you kidding me? And the guy says, getting old is a shock. Getting old is a shock. It comes quick. It doesn't give you a notice. You don't even pay attention to it. And pretty soon what you were putting off for the future, now you don't have the strength or the motivation to do. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Something's eating away at the foundation. And, and you're needy because you have information in you. You have history. You have heritage. And you have an ability to really move more mountains, uproot more sycamore trees, split more heavens, and open up more seas. Come on, somebody say amen. You know, and all of that is learning how to use your faith on you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And not be, not be too proud that you can't go practical. You can't mix miracles and medicine mix if you do it right. You just can't, you, you gotta know inside what's your balance. I could, Billy Burke could give you his balance but that may be an extreme to you. So my extreme, you know, my balance could be an extreme to you. Your job is with Holy Spirit, find out the balance for you with medicine and, and health and exercise and health. You know, I, you know, Jack LaLanne, I used to love Jack LaLanne. He pulled a tugboat across the English Channel with his teeth. He walked the Empire State Building on his hands. Think about that, on his hands. Talk about exercise. Have you ever been to the Empire State Building? Yep. I can tell maybe you have. Have you ever seen a picture of it? Yes. How many would like to walk in your hands just back to that door right there? Come on. <laughs> so I, when I read that, I think, wow, when you study stuff like that, you think, wow, that is like, well, that's where his passion was. That's where he was dedicated. See, so you have to find that what, what is it that is a balance to you so you don't go all practical. Or you don't get all super spiritual and you're too proud to take an aspirin or to go to a chiropractor. You gotta do everything with say, come on, say the full force of the kingdom. Say it. The full force of the kingdom. Now do it three times. Come on, say the full force. The full force come on, here we go. Come on, the full force. Come on, everybody, the full force. Can you raise your hands with me? Come on, the full force of the kingdom. See, if the devil knows that you're only, you, can, you can only play a one-string guitar, you're not a threat. <laughs> My grandfather told me that years ago. He said, Billy, anybody can play a one-string guitar. I thought, what's he mean by that? You know? <laughs> Catherine Kuhlman said to me, because I'd talked to her when I was just a kid, and, and I said, Ms. Kuhlman, why don't I just travel with you? She said, no, if you travel with me, you wouldn't learn as much, Billy. She said, you would just learn from me. And, she, and I said, no, I, I think I could learn a lot from you. I was young. I was a teenager. And she said, have you, who puts the milk in your refrigerator? She said, have you ever believed for a quart of milk? I said, I'm thinking, well, this lady's weird. This lady is weird. <laughs> you know, when you don't understand something, you attack it. Or you criticize it. And yet God's wanting you to grow into it. If you can get past your insecurity you know, and your self-absorbed thinking... God wants to expand you. Mm -hmm. And he wants to stretch you. Growing is a stretch. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get it. And I went home to my grandmother and I said, yeah, I was with Kath, Miss Coleman today. We called her Miss Coleman. I said, and she asked me who puts the milk in our refrigerator. Well, my grandmother got it. She got it right away. <laughs> she said, she's a smart woman. I said, well, what's so smart about that? Look, there's the milk. I opened, there's the milk. Mm -hmm. She said, well, what she's trying to tell you is you didn't provide that milk. I, I know, but you would. See, I still didn't get it that somebody else was still doing everything for me. And, and what you get on your own is what will last longer. I told you last night, a relay, any healing, any promise, anything you get through relay is easier to steal. So when you get a relay healing, you've got to make that your own. You got it through this person, but now you got to get in and back it up. But here's, what, here's the promise. From his back to my body. From his back to my body. From his back to my body. Whatever you have to do, because any seed that's worth stealing 
that attempt to steal that seed. That's why believers have not advanced. It's not the church or the pastor. They can't do everything for you. I mean, one of my best conversations with Gloria Copeland, Gloria's a dear friend, and we were in the green room talking, and she said, we were talking, getting some food, and she said, you know, Billy, everything in, in the Bible, she said, has to be appropriated. You know, and I just said, well, I just, it, it's, that phrase stuck with me as I'm stick, th throwing it to you. I said, Gloria, talk to me, what are you talking about? And she said, well, you know, they had to put the blood on the, on the post. You know, and they had to take the incense in between the dead and the living. You know, something, there's something we have to do, and we just got to teach these people that they have their part to play. Yeah. Amen. You fill the water pots with water, you can't make it wine, but he will. Yeah. But not until you fill the water pots with, wine, with water. Mm -hmm. Come on, see, I got the water job. <laughs> He's got the wine job. He's got the water job. And we work, and we work together. And see, so often we're not working together. We're working contrary to, to our own recovery. You can recover at any age. You gotta find out again, back to what's working against you. I'm gonna get into the scripture here in a minute, but I'm just gonna, I did my homework last night. I went over and I thought, what's wrong with these people? No, I didn't say that. Because <laughs> you're a good people and you're hungry. And, and, and Dr. G here, G. Oh, here I go. John G. John G. John G. John G. Oh, I love it. I'll be dreaming about Dr. G. John G. I spent yesterday afternoon with this guy in, over in the clinic over here in his practice. And I mean, he was shocking me, electrocuting me, working with me. Massage. No, really, the guy's a brilliant, he's genius. This guy has, if you, if you, and there's nothing wrong with, it doesn't take you out of faith. Hmm. You know, Kenneth Copeland had a uh, pacemaker put in. And I was there that night and he told me, we were in the back room and he said, I'm going to tell them tonight about my pacemaker. And I said, Brother Copeland, that's, you'll be doing them so much service by that. You're known as a person of faith and no nonsense. And he said, well, Billy, you know, it takes faith to believe this will work. <laughs> yeah. He said, I'm living to be 120. I could do anything I can to live to be 120. Then I gagged a little bit more, you know. <laughs> Don't doubt other people's faith. Learn right. from it. Amen. Don't be critical of it. Don't be intimidated by it. Mm. Learn from people that have, are walking where you're not. That's why God mixes you with other people. Yeah. It's not to get the cooties. If there's cooties around you, just say, boy, I'm not going to. And you break fellowship as much as you can with cooties. You got to get around people that are stronger than you, yeah. without you getting all insecure about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, th he's he's got three cars. I mean, there's three. Who needs three cars? I don't need three cars. <laughs> I don't need three cars. A bicycle. I'm, I'm happy with a bicycle, as long as I'm in the will of God. Well, that's you know, that's probably not true. <laughs> you probably you not know, be reflecting it, but deep inside you, we're all caught, we're all wired from heaven. Everybody here is hot wired. Mm -hmm. Something was lost in the garden mm -hmm. called perfection. Something was lost in the garden called divine connection. And ever since he put the angels to block the garden from going back and eating of the bad tree because they would live forever fallen. That's why they blocked it. His plan, fast forward, was redemption. Getting everything back. Not just what the devil stole, but what Adam forfeited. And what Eve gave up. I mean, they, they just, they gave everything up. Come on, say it out loud. I'm not giving nothing up. I'm here to take it back. I'm here to take it back. Every part of it. Every part and pass it to my children. And to their children. Until that great catching away. I'm going to do my part to replenish the earth with radical revolutionary believers. Come on. Radical revolutionary believers. Come on, give God a big, big shout. Come on. Glory. But, but I'll say it again. Everything that you read and, and in you're in church, you gotta, here's the question you have to ask yourself because the pastor's job is so immense. He has to cover every area of your life. 
So there's going to be 52 Sundays in that year that he may not hit the area that you're at. But you have to understand that everything that you're learning, every program that you watch, whoever your favorite teachers are, it's all meant to bring you to the conclusion of Mark 10, 27. All things are possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All things. The divine appointment that's never happened yet, as you get older maybe, the money you need to do what you feel God's called you to do. There's purpose dollars, then there's dream dollars, and, you know, or the miracle. This guy that came in that was paralyzed from the waist down, in bed for a year, couldn't move. He says, my, my life was over. I just thought all I can do is I can believe to get to the service. See, positioning is, is the key to power. You go out on a limb, he'll come to your tree. That's Zacchaeus. All Zacchaeus did was a little bit of effort. He didn't climb a, a, a big tree in the, in the rainforest up north. He climbed a sycamore tree. They're short. I mean, the first limb is probably right here. He didn't have to climb much, but it was a little bit more effort than most. Mm -hmm. A little bit more effort than most. It's not, God doesn't want you to give what you can't give. But you've got time and energy to golf and to fish and to shop and, and to, you know, how long does it take to get your nails done? When do you got to put up with to get your nails done? When do you got to smell to get your nails done? He sees all of the sacrifice we do for what we want that we think makes our life better. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, hey, if you can do that for them, just check your balance. Make sure you're balancing that out with me. That's right. He doesn't care about you getting your nails done. He'll give you money to get the nails done. What he's concerned about is give me some time to work in you. If you think nails make you look good, wait till you wear the will of God on you. That'll make you really look good. Come on, give him a shout today. Now, what I am expecting after this morning, I'm expecting more questions than we had last night. I just thought there should be more questions. That's how you learn. It says here in Luke 18 that uh, there was a widow in the city and she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a, a while. Everyone say he didn't answer. He didn't answer. For a while. Wow. This here is all about progressive healing. Progr a miracle in motion. That's my phrase I use, is a miracle in motion. We have cups with that, t-shirts with that, and we're putting together a whole seminar with, I am a miracle in motion. You have to believe that. Not because, not, because, not because God wants you to suffer a little longer. Look at me. The reason you're a miracle in motion is because he's working with you. That's right. You're not always home. <laughs> and you don't always do what he wants you to do. Amen. You know, I mean, you, you just, you know, we all kind of, like I said, we like to know it. We're collectors of information. We love to collect. Oh boy, that's why well, I love that teaching. Oh, that was so powerful. What, what you just repeated earlier. But something else takes up our time. You know, what's in you with abundance is what comes out of you. That, that's your responsibility to change that. We're going we're to help you with that today, but I want to read this because I want to stay on track. I'm not letting you get me off of what I'm supposed to say here. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he, he said with himself, though I fear not God or no regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said to her, to the unjust judge, shall not the unjust judge, I'm going to move down here a little bit. Uh, yes, verse number eight here. Tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Um, your perseverance, is what it says on your worksheet, your perseverance will pay off. Your perseverance will pay off. How come you're in good meetings and you get slain and you feel the Holy Spirit and yet 
you know, you didn't get free. I felt them, Pastor Billy, I, I mean, I felt them all through me, and I mean, I, and, and I thought for sure, and you know, and it's still, you know, I still had to drink some Jack Daniels in the morning, and I, I, I could have sworn last night something broke, or something did break. But what broke was you began to address your issue. It's not always the sudden splash, but it's the constant drop. And here's what I tell people, steady pressure breaks the yoke. Say it, steady pressure. Steady pressure. Breaks the yoke. Breaks the yoke. There's a lot of yokes that won't break just because you're in a great meeting, or you went to a great seminar, or you fell under the power, or you got a prophetic word. The one thing that God knows is that if he delivered everybody instantly, completely, and he would lose you. So remember, he knows you, he knows me, and he knows that his goal is to get his plan into your heart. And that is a hard job even for God to do. Because he's got to fight through so many things to get his perfect plan inside of you. And so a lot of times he, you know, like in here, he's, he's very aware that this person needs help. But he said, I'm not going to, I'm going to stay back for a while. But when I do come, I'll do it speedily. So he's leaving a time frame. You say, that doesn't sound like that's what God would do. I, I repeat, God thinks of things in light of eternity. We think of things in light of today. God's plan for you is for here, for in the next life. You're being qualified what you're going to do even in the next life. You know, so this is, he's eternal. And we have a hard time comprehending eternal. But in this story here, it says, I will, I will, I'm going to push, hold back for a while, but when I do come, so it, it says when I do come, so he's promising to finish the job. This whole thing's about, I'm not, I'm not going to give in right away, but I'm going to, I'm, I promise you when I do come, I will get this work done. Well, why does he want that delay? Because he wants you to want him. He wants you to want his will, his plan, his way. He doesn't want to heal you just for you can be more you. That's right. Amen. And one of the ways that one of the ways he accomplishes that by, by the delay is by finding out where you really are. You find out where people are when you tell them not now. Can you loan me a thousand dollars? Yes. Not today. Oh, but Pastor Billy, I need it today. See, we don't understand. If you have it, why don't you give it to me now? See, we're, now, it's good to be now-minded. We just talked about that. But it's also good to be what? To plug into that God is doing something perpetually in you. And he wants to apply the steady pressure. Well, why the steady pressure? One little girl asked me one time. I thought this was an amazing question she asked me. She says, how come, Pastor Billy, it took Moses so many trips? If God is so powerful, why did Moses have to go one time, two times, three times? He had to put the stick down, and then the frogs, and then the blood. And I'm like, what? If he's so strong, and we're so strong, why did it take Moses so many trips? I said, somebody get this little girl out of here quickly, you know. Because <laughs> we don't, we don't. We don't recognize how deep-rooted stuff is in us. Right. You take your conditions too lightly. That's right. You will become your dad and your mother to the T. That's not a bad thing because they got good traits. But the stuff your parents never told you about. I mean, my dad never sat me down and said, well, let me tell you what I've done wrong all my life, boy. Let me tell you... Let me tell you about this. And never, nor my mother, never. Because that's not what a parent's job is. Okay, but, but it was there. So all I know, all I can think of now is what, what's kind of there because of what's surfacing in me. Yeah, but I was forgiven. Well, forgiven and cleansed are two different things. He's able to forgive and cleanse. Come on, so he's able to forgive and cleanse. They're different. Cleansing is way different than forgiveness. Forgiveness is when the books are stricken clean in heaven. Mm -hmm. Cleansing is whenever it's uprooted in you. 
See, whenever you're cleansed, all the, all the, all the evidence is removed from you. You won't keep going back to it. You keep returning to the things you get forgiven of because, but because you haven't been cleansed mm -hmm. completely of something. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you see that, that a lot of this stuff is deeper rooted in you. You don't want to swear. You know it's wrong to swear and say some of those choice words that people like to swear with. And damn car, close the damn door. And where's the damn dog? And, and what the hell's going on? <laughs> Now, the reason Pat Robertson said, I just said those words, those are words that are actually in the Bible. Come on, say amen. <laughs> Pat Robertson said, if you hit your hand with a hammer and you say, boy, that hurts like hell, it's kind of true. And I thought, gee, I like Pat Robertson. I'm telling you right now. But there's a lot of those words that are not in the Bible. Okay, and those words reveal the way the world works with their authority. When the, when the world puts those words to something, and that's their level, that ours is in the name of Jesus. Ours is because of the blood. Ours is chapter and verse. Theirs is vulgarity, an unclean language. Well, you don't want that coming out of you. And so you come to the altar, no, Lord, forgive me, da 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 da. Then you find out, boy, how's coming still? Because it's rooted. And the only way that yoke is going to break is if you decide. Come on, say, if I decide. If I decide that I want a washboard stomach. I mean, I want my wife to see ripples right in here. And then I think to myself, yeah, but I don't want to put the time in. I don't want to do that. I mean, who cares about that? You know? And I, do I want to always be able to comb my hair in the car that you see your reflection? Uh, I could do that, but I don't want to put the time into having a clean wheels. And, see, p you see where people invest their time. Mm -hmm. They have that kind of a car and that kind of a body, that kind of a landscape in your house. It's just time. Hmm. Who wouldn't want that? But somewhere along the way, you have to give up something to get something greater than a nice looking yard. And that a car, when everybody, when you pull into the parking lot and, you know, and everybody, well, that car, he keeps that thing so clean. And I've been in your house, oh my God, you could just, oh. You pick up a glass and they wipe the mark and put the glass back on again. But can they fight off cancer? Can they fight off fear? I'm not happy with the level of fear that's been revealed in the church. You can't keep people heavy into activity and take away all their fears. Amen. A concert, a choir thing, a day with the kids, a clown coming in and dancing around. It keeps people busy, but it's not productive. Yes. Under certain things, the devil just laughs at them. We, we get more caught up in activity than productivity. <coughs> Steady pressure. We're going to talk about that this morning. Steady pressure. Any good weight trainer will tell you it's not how much weight you lift, it's the reps you do with what your body can handle. The reps, the repeated. What you do, steady. Carrie Underwood sang the famous song, Jesus, Take the Wheel. Meaning, who's in charge of your every day? From the time your feet hit the floor till they leave the floor. I'm just talking here, I'm kind of spraying this because I don't know what you want. I don't know what you're really after. You tell me you want really healed and I'll do whatever, but when I talk to you and question you, I'm finding out, <gasps> you don't do that much. You say, but I'm not into works. I'm not into works. I don't do works. I'm saved by grace. I'm not into works. Well, you better be. Because James 2.26 says, faith without works. Mm. See, the works of the law are different than the works of faith. The works of the law is Romans 3.20. It says, where the deeds of the flesh and the law of the flesh will bring you nothing. But James 2.26 says, the works of faith. Works of faith is prayer, meditation, confession, declaration, forgiveness, 
all those spiritual laws will take you somewhere. But you don't do them. You're over here at the works of the flesh. And on. And you think that's going to do something. Showing up for church every week isn't going to get you much. I mean, it's going to make you think like, wow, God's really impressed with me. No, he went to the cross. You went to church. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Somebody help me. It's a big difference. Come on. Can you say amen? amen. amen. You say, yeah, but you know, I, I have to get up early. Uh, they rode camels. <laughs> You're getting in an air-conditioned car and thinking, oh man, I have it so hard. They rode camels. Or when I was up at the North Pole, we had Cree Indians. We had over a thousand Cree Indians for four days, every night, 60 below zero. And when you walked outside the building, I mean, the steam that would come out of the room, but for my, as long as you could see was snowmobiles. And I thought, What's, who would have a dealership up here? <laughs> I was thinking, who has a dealership up here? And the pastor said to me, that's not dealership. That's the people that were sitting in your service tonight. They came across the tundra to hear you wow. on snowmobiles. Mm. Wow. I thought, oh, Lord. And then he said, come here, I'll take you. And he took me on back, and there were the green lights, the green lights over heaven, wow. all the, the swirl of purple and, and green. He said, do you ever see these done in Florida? Ah, uh, not recently, not recently. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're way up here, and these people have no way to get to church in 60 below zero weather. Look at your neighbor and say, boy, I got it easy. Come on, tell your neighbor, right? <laughs> there goes that excuse. <laughs> steady pressure. Come on, say it with me, steady pressure. steady pressure. See, steady pressure is what's going to, that's what Moses did with Pharaoh. Because if you read the story of Moses and Pharaoh, you know, Moses throws down his staff and turns into a snake, and Pharaoh calls his Egyptians, and there comes their snakes. Well, then Moses' the snake ate their snake. See, that's right there where I quit. I quit right there. Yeah. If I'm in there and I think, I'm going with this guy. Come on, I'm going with this guy. Yeah, right. His snake ate them. That's all I need. Yeah. But that's not all that Pharaoh needed. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. See, everybody in this room needs a different place. There's a different breaking point for you. You know, and that's why when we get to fellowship and we get liking everybody and you come to go to the same church, you get into a real area, very, a gray area. You're in the same building, but you're in different realities. And maybe you need a breakthrough quicker, sooner, more than someone next to you. You determine how desperate you want to be to get steady pressure operating in your life. There's no yoke that can't break. That scripture in Isaiah we just talked about? Somehow, some way. Say it, somehow, somehow. some way. That yoke will break. That yoke will break. If God said all things are possible, that means the worst of the worst cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, from, from Alzheimer's and dementia to a serial killer to a rapist. You, you, can't, you can't be let your thinking be limited and get where you want to go. So guess what God does? He takes you to a church and he slowly begins to stretch your imagination. One of the greatest weapons you have is your imagination. Amen. I can play naked women up here if I want to. I can play me being the president of the United States up here if I want to. I can be, I can say, I can, or I can play, hey, here's what God's going to do. He's going to bring me from George Street in a small frame house to a Presbyterian church to get healed of cancer. You know, to get married to this wonderful lady and, and to begin this journey and this prophetic path. And, and boy, the best is yet to come. I can imagine stuff. I can imagine really good stuff. Oh, my God. I took my kids to see a Disney movie. And in the movie, a little mouse was driving a little green Mercedes. A lime green Mercedes. And I said to my wife, I said, boy, I want one of those. I want one of those. <laughs> A stupid, that's a good little car, and I thought, I want one of those. And she said, well, that's great. She said, it's a cartoon. I said, yeah, but I like the way it looks. <laughs> and she laughed about it, and the kids were little at that time. And so I, went, I was in a meeting that Sunday, and I said, boy, I'll tell you what, I, I saw this movie, and I said, there's this green Mercedes, this little, I explained the car, and I said, I, 
uh, someday I'm going to be getting me one of those. The next day, uh, the next day, phone call comes and my secretary says, there's some lady on the phone. She said she heard your thing about that green Mercedes and she has one. She wants to deliver it and have it deliver it right to your office. Now watch this. I thought, what? And I thought, that can't be right. She said she's on the phone. So I picked up the phone. I said, yeah, ma'am, this is Billy Burke. She says, I was in that service. I heard what you said. I have that exact car. I want to give it to you. I said, oh, my God. I'm thinking, i got to be careful thinking out loud. <laughs> See? And I thought, oh, my God, what am I going to do with this? And she said, I'm going to have it serviced. And she said, you, of course, you know that car's not brand new. It's a classic. But I'm going to have it serviced and brought to your office. I want to make sure it's safe. And I'll send the title to you overnight. And I thought, wow. I leaned back and I said, watch this. This is terrible because we see so many miracles. But I leaned back in my chair and I thought, wow, this stuff really works. <laughs> <laughs> so this title comes. I had this title. And she said the car would be there probably in two weeks because she wants to make sure it's all clean. I thought, I can't wait to take this to his church and tell everybody, look what God can do for me. He can do it for you. And, you know, all that. So I stuck it in my jacket. And, and I was up in the pulpit, and I was just, you know, having a good time, knowing what I was about to do. And right as the service was ending, this lady comes running up on the side of the church. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I said, ma'am, are you okay? Oh, my God. And she fell at my feet. Right there, crying. And I said, ma'am, are you okay? And the ushers come over because they thought security issues. And, 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 she, and she picked her head up, and she said, I would love to be in your meetings all the time. She said, if I could just get to your meetings, I would be there. She said, I have no transportation. <laughs> I know, I was terrible. I thought, Lord, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I haven't even seen the car yet. I haven't even smelt the car yet. And he said, give her that car. I gave it to you, give it to her. Oh, Lord, I just don't receive that. <laughs> I bind that spirit in Jesus' name. God, would, here's what we say. We always don't know what God will do, but we know what God would never do. He would never have you do that. And she, I said, so I questioned her. I said, so, ma'am, you're telling me if you had transportation, yes, yes. You, you would come all the time, yes, yes. I have no way. My husband did this and that. I just had a car. And everybody's watching. They don't know I have this up here anyhow. I said, okay, ma'am, I got something for you. She says, yes. I said, I have, and I pulled out the title of the deed to the car. I said, I have a Mercedes Benz that was just give, given to me. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. And now here's, here's the reaction. Oh, my God. Here's the Christians out here. I've been coming, I've been faithful to you. I've paid my tithes to you. I've given you help whenever you didn't have it. Oh my God, and she gets the Mercedes. I said, she's going home today, and the husband's going, he did. He said, what kind of a service was it? She said, not bad. <laughs> Sermon was good. People got help. Oh, honey, we got a Mercedes. See, I'm telling you, and that's the true story. Why did he not let me drive it? Because I wouldn't have given it. He knows me better than I know me. Had I driven that car? Oh, Jesus, I'd have kept it for at least a year. Come on, somebody. <laughs> See, he knows you. He knows you. And he wants to bless you beyond your wildest, yes. that imagination. But you aren't imagining it. Ephesians 3.20, write that verse down, you all know it. That your God wants to give you above and beyond your wildest imagination. But then the next verse says, according to the mighty power that worketh in you. So what are you, what are you using? With, what videos are you playing up here? What are you imagining? Are you stuck in yesterday? Are you stuck with vengeance? Are you stuck with... I'm not going to have enough money when I retire. Thank you, Lord 
and you're stuck with, I'm in this wheelchair the rest of my life. Ephesians 3, 1, Paul said, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. I'm not a prisoner to Rome. I'm not a prisoner to the centurion that I'm chained to. He's chained to a Roman guard. He's chained in the Roman palaces. Here's what Paul said. I'm not a prisoner to that. I'm a prisoner of the Lord. You think you got me. You don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Zechariah said, I'm a prisoner of hope. Mm -hmm. Everybody's a prisoner to somebody. Or something. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's important that you really become a prisoner of the Lord. That's just a robocall anyhow. Probably want to sell her solar panels or something. <laughs> Everybody's somebody's slave. Why do you think all that you think? Why do you spend, why is all of your thought process going there? How can you change that? By getting your mind over here on a different set of rules. Yes, See, the Bible is a great book. You know, if I had one here, I, I could pick mine up. I'm, the Bible is a great book, but it's, it's also tangible. See, when Abraham got his word to have baby Sarah, there was no... That's right. It was a, a spirit to spirit. Mm -hmm. See, we have a tangible book to hold to help us transition into the unseen. Where did that baby come from? He had no sperm and she had no eggs. Get ready, I'm taking you into the twilight zone. Come on, somebody. Come on, say, he had no sperm and she had no eggs. So where did the baby come from? All they had was fishes and loaves, couple. They fed 15, 20,000 people. Where did that food come from? Everything comes from somewhere. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. So where did the baby come from? If you read Acts 17, it says, we're the offspring of God. Before you win your mother's womb, you win God's heart. Mm -hmm. That's why abortion is such a hideous crime. Yes. It's because you're not just taking the baby out of a womb, you're cutting into God's heart and plan to get that baby into a womb. Come on, say, I'm the offspring of God. So where did the baby come from? It'd be easy just to say everything, God. Well, it just came from God. The food came from God. Go further. Go a little, do a deeper dive. There's another dimension connected to this dimension. And here's what Abraham did. He called it in. Who calleth those things. He called the baby in from the other dimension. Pay attention to me. Listen to this. He was doing the works of faith. You get busy with the works of faith instead of getting the works of the law or let alone worse, worry, think, and all of that. You'll begin to change your reality sooner than later. Yeah. But you may have to call it in. Well, what's that do? Well, it proves to God that you believe in something you don't see. You took it from a place that you can see it. It's promised here, but it's not delivered through here. See, if all you do is study principles and you forget about the person, then you're in the New Age. The New Age movement is all about the principles of the Bible without the person. So if you're satisfied with just good notes, good notebook, good sermons, collecting CDs, and going to church functions. And I like church functions, but you, you can't live there. People die, go to heaven. People move across the country. People backslide, people quit. People are the most unpredictable things on the planet. This is settled in the heavens. So it's promised to you here, but it's delivered by your mouth through another, from another dimension. It's where the body parts are. I don't want to belabor this, but I could talk about stuff we've seen. Breasts come, double mastectomies, breasts grow back, new gallbladders, new stomachs. I've seen so many organs grow back, it's incredible. But we had to call them in. But then if you do that, that takes time. If it doesn't happen right away, then it takes more time. And then, and then it takes more time. 
And, and you don't like steady pressure because it takes too much time for steady pressure. See, if you can't get the, if you can't get the, the cap off the pickle jar, then you just you run hot water on it. If you don't run hot, doesn't, doesn't work, then you just smash the jar. You don't want to try and get that lid off. You don't got time for that. You're too important to get lids off of jars and to imagine. So you'd rather watch a movie and just pretend that everything is solved in 60 minutes or 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? You want to be out of that wheelchair, but you never think about getting out of that wheelchair. Now, you may lie to me in church and say, that's all I think about. Well, I'm discerning something different. I'm not going to expose you because I care about you. People lie to me all the time. Oh, they lie all the time. They, they just think I'm some stupid blonde from Florida. Come on, somebody say amen here. <laughs> you know, they just... I'm thinking, lady, and it's so insulting sometimes. And, they, 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 and sometimes I'll just set the record straight. Jesus said, I know you're not married, and the one you're with now is not, and you've had five husbands. Mm -hmm. She was trying to blow him away. Because mm -hmm. that's where women meet their men with the well. That's where they hooked up. That was their seventh in Broadway. You get around discerning people, and they're going to help you see not just where you are and where you want to go, but what's holding you back. Lady, I've been talking to you for 20 minutes. I haven't heard one scripture come out of your mouth yet. I haven't even heard you say the name Jesus. He happens to be the center of all of our lives. Right. One girl I'm talking to in my office, and she's, she's just so super ridiculous. She doesn't want to listen to me, and I just thought, you know, I'm just done with this. I'm, and she's just mouthing back to me. And I said, okay, I said, let's not even talk about the blue Mustang. Let's not talk about the, the back seat of the blue Mustang. You want to talk about that? She said, who told you about that? I said, no, you don't want to talk to me. I'm just some dumb, stupid pastor trying to straighten you out. But I said, no, if you want to talk about the blue Mustang, she says, who told you about the blue Mustang? I said, I'm hearing something right now about you in the back seat of a blue Mustang. So do you want to talk to me or not? I left, that, I left that session that day, so I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> you say, can I do that? You've got to give your mind over. I'm, I'm a student for watching what people read. On the beaches, I'm on the beaches, in the airplanes. What people are ingesting doesn't leave room for any imagination. They can't, they can't fight through all the stuff to see themselves any more economically good. So the next best thing is just to hang out at church. Let someone else, you know, kill the cow, butcher the cow, give you a hamburger every Sunday. But you'll never eat good of the land like that. You appreciate the church. You support the pastor. You pay your tithes. You volunteer, you do your work. But when you go home, no one can get for you what you can get for yourself. You've got to want it. And you can do that. Unless you just don't like reading the Bible or listening to CDs or, or speaking to your mountains. You know to do it, but do you do it? You know to tithe, but do you do it? I think it's a shame that pastors, every church that I go to, a pastor has to get up there and spend 10 minutes Reminding people, you know, 10% help the church. We need a parking lot. That's sad. And the world puts up a casino in six months. Or a bank in three months. You know, I mean, it's incredible. That, 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 we, that we know that, oh, I know I need to do that. And we know we need to forgive. I mean, when Jan Crouch had her cancer and Jotun Dodi Osteen, both of those I had access to. Both of those ladies, when they were dying, went into a, a, a high mode of forgiving everybody. That's what brought Dodie into health, and that's what healed Jan Crouch. She didn't die of what she had. It was another issue. But she, she, and Jan said she would just forgive people. She, names were coming, and she would just, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. She knew to do it like we know to do it, but she did it. The difference is somebody did it. You gotta do it. But that means time. 
And Moses said, I don't want to go back. I, I did the snake thing. I did the frog thing. <laughs> And pretty soon it's kind of like, I, you know, I anointed myself with oil, I slept with a prayer cloth, you know, I, I forgave everybody, and, 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 and it's the steady pressure. What did this judge just, just say? Though she weary me. Mm -hmm. So you're putting the pressure not on God, you're putting the pressure on the yoke that has you. Good. The yoke that says you'll never walk, you'll never be strong, you'll never be off of heart medicine. You'll never be without glasses. You'll never be without hearing aids. Because it gets easier to get, you know, it gets easier to treat something than to believe you can't have it. I was at the Christian retreat in Bradenton, and I said, somebody here has hearing aids, and you're being healed right now. You can hear me. And I just started walking to the audience because nobody would respond. Just because nobody responds don't mean it's not true. So I'm walking back to the audience, and I'm thinking, somebody, I said, I wish you would come because all God wants to do is heal your ears. You know, and I looked over in this one guy's direction. He said, don't look at me. You know, and I said, is it you, sir? Are you the one that has the hearing aids? The one? He said, I'm not getting rid of these hearing aids. He said, I paid $5,000 each for these. His wife next to him. Now, here's how you know you married the right woman. She said, you get up there right now. You get up there. He's coming. Lee Burke, he's coming. Pastor Billy, he'll be up there in that second. You get up there right now. I thought, wow, we're going to have to get them healed in the marriage counseling right in the whole service, the same service. And he said, oh, he just was contrary. He got up and he walked over and he said, yeah, he said, you know, this has been, I've been like this for 15, 20 years. And I mean, these aren't bad. I mean, tell me Jesus don't hate these. He says, he don't hate them. He just wants you to experience his goodness. Why? You might sing a little better. You might testify a few more times. You might be able to help somebody in the same position. You might qualify for more. You might add years to your life. So I put my fingers up in there and told him, he just started to hear and he says, I don't believe it. I said, I know you did and I did. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you just... You just, the axe head was, come on, say, the axe head was borrowed. The axe head was borrowed. Elisha said, that axe head was borrowed and I lost it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel bad. It's always embarrassing for the person with the phone, right? I feel bad. <laughs> it's so important that you understand the thing you don't even think about is one of the greatest weapons you have. A lady came up to me and she said, I'm going to be an old maid. I said, you are? She said, yes. I said, how old are you? She said, 38. <laughs> she said, I've been to every singles group in the city. It's a big city where I was. And she said, and she said there's nobody here. He, there's never been, nobody ever walked. She said, I'm just resigning to the fact that I'm going to be an old maid. I said, lady, your thinking is terrible. <laughs> What did Isaiah say? I, I have unclean lips, and I came from a history of unclean lips. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 6. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 6. I came from a family curse. Mm -hmm. We all have unclean lips. Mm -hmm. And this lady says to me, I, and she was telling me about, you know, I just, I'm resigned to it. I'm just going to. Uh, I said, well, how do you know he's not right now? How do you know? I said, have you ever been to Hawaii? She said, why would you ask me that? I said, I'm just asking, have you ever been to Hawaii? She said, no. What's the big deal about Hawaii? I said, he could be on a plane right now from Hawaii, coming on a plane, landing tonight, and you meet him this week. She says, is God telling you that? <laughs> well, we changed her quickly, right? <laughs> Knocked her socks off, because all it took, and that God wasn't telling me that. But God was saying, hey, get out of that stronghold. It's not called a weak hold. It's called a stronghold because it's strong. It's so strong you can't break it with willpower. It's so strong therapy don't work. No man can tame the tongue. 
but the Holy Spirit can. Yes. That's why it was tongues of fire that fell the Pentecost. Yeah. It's very, very important that you understand that all the power you need to change all that needs to be changed. Well, I mean, what's the use? We're going to get to heaven anyhow. The use is to have some level of back to the word influence. I mean, you can help your kids by leaving them money, an inheritance, but you can do better for them by leaving them a heritage. Yeah. See, because we all fight our daddy's devil. Everybody in this room fights your daddy's devil. You fight where you came from, in you. And one of the ways you beat that is, especially if you can't walk or you can't get around, your energy is not what it used to be. You know, you've got to really use that mind that has really put you maybe where you are. Because no one ever taught you properly on how powerful your God thoughts are. And we spend a lifetime just hearing sermons, hearing teachings, and yet not imagining anything. Mm -hmm. Yet we imagine the wrong things. Mm -hmm. I think, how many know what I'm talking about? Let me see here. Yeah. So we want, to go to, we want to go to Bible school and healing school and learn all this new stuff. The thing, the greatest secret weapon you have is right in your own head. It's replaying the faithfulness of God. Like David rehearsed before Goliath, the bear, the lion, and now big boy, bad boy, you're next. And then he did the same thing on, on uh, Bathsheba. Same thing on his son Absalom. David just went boom, boom, boom. Even though he, made it, he did make that horrific mistake with Bathsheba. But it was father filtered. See, when you decide to do something so wrong and you want it so bad, God will eventually filter it to you. When you read a story about Pharaoh, it says, and Pharaoh hardened his heart, and Pharaoh hardened his heart, and Pharaoh hardened his heart. But then the next episode, and God hardened Pharaoh's heart. In other words, he said, you want a hard heart? You got it. You want to be convinced it's bad to prosper? Have at it. You don't believe you're going to be healed? Then just wait for heaven. Genesis 6 says, My spirit will not always strive with man. I'm not going to beg anybody to get healed. I suffered for you to get you healed. I suffered for you to be more positive than you are. You're letting somebody in your life, in your mother, your father, your history, spoil your positivity. You paint everybody with the same brush. You know, and because of that, you're just, there's no room for you to expand. You're just, all evangelists are this way. All priests are this way. All movie stars are this way. And there's no room for you to expand into believing that some of these people really, really are amazing people that needed a Savior just like you did. I've never been with so many important people in my life. <laughs> I'm with a bunch of VIP, Mount Hope VIP people here. I love it. I love it. Hope the Lord hears and calls me so I look as important as some of you. Steady. Fresh. Years ago, I said to my grandmother, she said, just keep it up, Bailey. And she said, uh, God's going to use you in a special way. I said, I said ma'am, I said, but am I going to see a lot of miracles? And she said, well, are you seeing some now? I said, I am. She said, well, that's more than you were last year. That's right. <laughs> uh as we got in the circle to pray, she prayed, Lord, bless Melanie and bless Billy and da 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 And she said, oh, by the way, Lord, heal the plane. I said, heal the plane? What are you talking about, heal the plane? Something wrong with the plane? <laughs> Who ever heard of praying, heal the plane? I said to her, I said, is the plane okay? She said, I just prayed for the healing of your plane. I said, well, what did the Lord show? That it need healed. Which part? <laughs> 
you know? And, and, and I, I thought, at first I thought, that's absurd. Now I get on every plane. Every plane I get on, I hear the Lord speaks a part of the plane. The rivets, the front end, the tail end, the hydraulics, the cockpit. I just, Lord, cover the cockpit. Cover, oh Lord, the bolts. Cover the windows. The landing gear, something wrong with that landing gear. You've got to get sensitized to the Holy Spirit. And when you do, then God's able to speak to you more graphically. But the one thing you gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta sign up for, no matter how long it takes. Why did David pick five stones out of the brook? Because Goliath had four brothers? No. You think David said, get me a report on this guy. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna find out all about him. I don't know who's with, no, 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 no. You get into the numbers thing and you can say grace is the number five. You could say the five-fold ministry. That's for people that don't have anything sermon material to preach about. <laughs> it makes a good sermon, but it don't work. Why did he pick up five stones? Because he heard how big this guy was. He's nine, ten feet. How many stones is it going to take? I know what it takes for a wolf. I know what it takes for a bear. How many stones are it going to take? What's it going to take? Come on, say, what's it going to take? <laughs> You don't know. So that's why you get extra oil like the virgins did. That's why you get extra oil because the darkness that's coming on planet earth in the days of head is going to be darker than you could ever imagine. Moses said you could touch the darkness. Moses said this darkness can be caught in the hand. What we're seeing on this planet is a level, an invasion of darkness. And God's counting on you and I to be that Isaiah 60. People groping in darkness, but he says, I say unto you, arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord is on you. Come on, somebody give God a shout. It's dark out there. You know, and these, a lot of these diseases are mutating. And what used to work doesn't work. There's tremendous lawlessness. It's going to take more effort. Yeah, but I'm not in the works. My preacher's talking to me about the grace of God. Well, ask your preacher if he's living in your circumstances. Maybe his devils disappear instantly. But yours don't. You're still struggling to put food on the table. You're still struggling to, you know, to sleep all night without getting up three times. Well, I don't mind it. No, but your wife does. <laughs> Quit thinking of you. Get healed for other people. Get healed for your grandchildren. They haven't been able to see you throw a ball in years. Come on, somebody. Amen. Grandpa, don't throw the ball no more. No, Grandpa, don't walk across the room no more, Grandpa. No, Grandpa can't eat pizza after midnight no more. Quit thinking of you so much. Get strong for the people that are going to need you. You know what life's like. Love it. You know what your grandchildren are headed for. Yes. Be here for as long as you can be here to be a sounding board. To turn crooked things straight. Come on, to turn rough places smooth. Yes. To part the waters for them. Amen. So they can make a way easier than what you had. But you've got to stay strong to do that. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to anybody here today? Yes. Steady pressure will break any and every. Any and every yoke, healing yoke, financial yoke, marriage yoke. There's no yoke that should be able to stay within the believer if they continue to stay what? Faithful yeah. and not pull out of faith. Yeah. That one story, you can read it later, we won't read the whole thing, but the one story in John 5. about the pool at Bethesda. Probably a thousand or more people laid around this pool that, you know, that were sick and affirmed. And the one guy who couldn't walk for 38 years. 38 years. Jesus asked him a question, do you want to be made well? What a question to ask somebody who couldn't walk for 38 years. Yeah. You're asking me if I, if I want to get healed? Are you kidding me? 
Why would Jesus ask him that? Because even though the guy in the, in the beginning tried to get into the water, he came to a point, he made this decision, I can't get in. Next best thing is to hang around people, find a good church, water's moving. But I quit pressing in. That's where most people are today. They find a good church. I love my pastor. We're doing a lot of great things. I get that. I get that. But are you pressing in for what God has for you? You're not pressing in at all. You're pressing into football. You're pressing into Pilates. You're pressing into... I get it. I'm not... not, I'm just here talking. Don't throw anything up here except money. Come on, say amen. (laughs) Pressing in. What's it mean to press? It means to press in. It means this. Whenever I'm eating my food, dear Jesus, thank you for the food. Oh, by the way, Lord, touch my daughter. Bring her out of that. Bring her out of that relationship. Bring her out of that. I break that thing. I pull out the fiery darts. And well, wait a minute. Slow down. You're just praying for the food. Yeah, but I, I I'm pressing in for her on this. I, I'm pressing in for him on this. Pressing in means there's no restrictions. There's no time zone. You let the devil see, I can't be stopped. I'm spirit-led. I'm not led by a schedule. Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. I'm not scheduled there. But today, Father God is saying, get there. Because they're going to touch a woman. And she's going to touch a town. And she's going to hear your words and be so consumed by what you're saying, she's going to leave her water pot there. She's going to forget why she came to the well to begin with. Somebody stole my mind. Somebody captured my thinking. Woo! Somebody give God a shout. See, you get a spoonful of hope and it'll, it'll make you crazy for whenever you really believe that you can recover. That you can accomplish what you, what you wanted to that's never happened yet. You just got to learn to recognize that this is your new moment. Some people never recognize it. My friend Kevin, who, who built mansions all through Florida. I mean, not one million dollar homes, but two and three million dollar homes. He was a builder of mansions. He was one of my, he was on our board. He was just a great guy. Married to Kim, and she's just a temporary, not temporary, but a, a simple homemaker. And one day she says to Kevin, she says, I got this recipe for jelly. And she said, I'd like to put some, they're, they're having a little fair down here in downtown. I'd like to put some, some jars out. He said, well, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. She said, but I need some money to do that. And he said, well, how much you need? She said, I don't know, 100 bucks. 200 bucks? He said, no problem. Just go get, go get the jelly done. So she took, I think she took um, 20, 20 jars of the jelly. She comes home and she says, uh, honey, every jar went, every jar. He said, great. That's great. I want to do more. What are you, you going to run away with this jelly stuff? I want to do more. What, what do you want to do? 50. 50 jars. Okay, do 50 jars. She comes back the next night. I know these people. She said, honey, 50 jars, gone. He says, he says, what is it with this? He says, have I tasted your jelly? Well, you, you know. She says, I want to do 100 jars. I want to do 100 jars. He said, Kim, you're getting out of control. 100 jars. She said, just 100 jars. Oh, I, want you, I want you to come and watch it. She said, it's amazing. She gets 100 jars. But on that day, president of the Food Network, Shows up at her table. Says, I want you on our show. History's made. He don't build homes no more. (laughs) He makes jelly. (laughs) Kevin makes jelly. That's his name, not the pastor Kevin. His, you know. And, And, but I'm saying how quickly. He recognizes some men would never recognize that. Recognize that Jesus is in your storm. Mm -hmm. Peter said, is that you? Mm -hmm. He didn't recognize Jesus standing on the water. He didn't recognize supernatural. Mm -hmm. He knew Jesus standing on land, Mm -hmm. but not on water. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm talking to you today. 
You got to recognize that all the stuff you're doing in the natural is helping you, but God's setting you up for a supernatural breakthrough mm -hmm. that you can't explain other than God did it. Where'd that strength come from? Oh, where'd that money come from? Oh. Steady pressure. Thank you, Jesus. What kind of music do you listen to? What kind of movies do you watch? Mm -hmm. Do you ever monitor the words coming out of your mouth? Do you harness those thoughts and say, no, that's, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. I deal with thoughts a lot. Because, man, my head is invaded. Because he wants to stop me so I can stop doing what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, to see people healed, to see them walk in one way and walk out another way. Mm -hmm. To be able to think my suffering through life is now going to pay high dividends for other people. Mm -hmm. Some of you have stories that would unlock people's faith instantly. But you're too ashamed to share it. Because you don't want anybody to know you had what you had or you have what you had or you got through what you were getting through. You know. Praise God. I was on a meeting in, in Boston, and this guy came to me. He said, you're, you're a hot shot in the church, but I'd like to see you in real life. I said, well, the church is real life. He said, no, I'll rent a warehouse. I'll get 1,000 people in there, street people, bag ladies, prostitutes. I'll, I'll get pimps in there. I'll, I'll, I'll pack the place out. I'll pay for everything. I just would like to see how you function in that set. <laughs> Man, make my day. Come on, somebody. You know, and I, I said, you, you would do that? He said, I'll do it. I said, you would. He said, I know the building. I know the mayor. I can do this. But can you do this? He said, give me three weeks. I said, three weeks, you're going to pack out a building with all these kind of people. You want me to come? He said, yeah, just bring your Bible. Just bring you. Bring your hot suit jacket and your little hanky. Just bring it. Let's see how these people respond to you. I said, well, I said you got a deal. And then when I said that, I thought, you know, wow, what did I just say? I can't it. <laughs> so I show up here to this building. Ladies and gentlemen, it was so packed. And then, I mean, it, the smell was there, the look was there, everything everybody imaginable. So I didn't really know what to do. And God just said, just put your Bible down, just put your hands up, just start talking to them. Don't preach at them. Tell them about my love. Tell them about that I, I want to help them. It's not you, Billy. It's me. I'll take care of this. I can help these kind of people. So I just said, you know, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me just talk to you about Jesus. You don't have a trouble with Jesus. You have trouble with the church, not with Jesus. He's been packaged wrong to you. He's not looking for you to be perfect. There's real power here. So I started praying for people. They started falling. Nobody was catching them. So this one girl in the back, she stands up, and she had... I always tell people she had enough hair in her head for three people. I mean, <laughs> she was a stripper. She was a stripper in New York, pole dancer. And she shouted out loud. She said, hey, preacher man, come and see if that power works on me. I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> we have a bully in the midst. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you know, and, and she stood out and she just said, uh, my name's Rita. She said, I think you kind of know what I do for a living. And she said, I'm a dancer. And uh, I see what you're doing. My mother knew about this stuff. But she said, I don't think you got it. And she said, come and touch me. Come and touch me. I thought, oh, my God. Most people are running from me. You know, they don't <laughs> stay away from me. She said, come and touch me. And I thought, oh, boy. I my little heart's down here thinking. So here's what I do when something like that happens. Lord, where are you here, Lord? You <laughs> He said, go get her. I said, okay, I'll go get her, but knock her into yesterday. Knock her into yesterday. <laughs> That's what Goliath was. He was a mocking spirit. He mocked God's people. He mocked the power. He defied the armies of Israel. And David said, I'm coming after you, big boy, because I come in the name. Yeah. So it goes back to knowing Something and believing what you know. Yes, Lord. And when you know it beyond knowing it, there's no room for fear. There's no room for shame. Mm -hmm. 
It's worth giving your life for. So I walk back and she's standing there like this, you know, and she shakes her hair like that. I'm thinking, Lord, what do you want? He said, barely touch her, barely. I don't want nobody saying you pushed her or whatever. Well, don't shake her, don't do anything. You just touch her with your fingers. I said, okay, what's your name? She said, my name's Rita. What's your name, preacher? I'm like, oh God. <laughs> Take this lady into yesterday. <laughs> Was I tempted? Not a bit. I was on assignment. This is an assignment. You can't be getting into that stuff if you want to help people. I just said, hey, Rita, how's this? Boom, just went like that. I mean, her hair went one way. <laughs> she hit the floor. She flopped like a fish on a harbor. And I'm thinking, man, and then I looked around the room and said, don't you ever mess with God. Don't you ever mess with God. You could see these people go, ooh, ooh. It's like in a movie, ooh, ooh. Well, she gets up, she gets up, she's collecting herself. And she says, man, I, I never felt that. I never felt that. Today, today, so I'm here, she runs a ministry in the combat zone in Boston, bringing girls out. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, somebody had to take the challenge of the demons that tell you this isn't real or it's too late for you. Or you're too old. Doesn't work on old people. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this guy in Puerto Rico, he's sitting on the front row with the cane. I walked on. I said, hey, what's going on here? So we had, I don't know how many, a lot of people. I said, what's going on here, sir? He said, well, I'm here to get a miracle. I said, what kind of miracle do you need? He said, I can't walk without this cane. I'm tired of this cane, and I want to get rid of the cane. I said, okay. I said, sir, how old are you? He said, I'm 99. <laughs> lovely. I said, 99, and I said, I made a mistake. See, you're in the spirit. You can get in the flesh this easy. Don't take, don't take much to slide off the road. I said, you're 99. Shouldn't you want to go to heaven? Oh, that really did it. He said, I don't want, I'll go there when I'm dead. When I want my life, I want to get healed. <laughs> Slap me on both sides of my cheek. Oh my, I, this guy was snappy. And I said, okay. I said, and people were laughing like, you know, like yeah. I said, okay, sure, that's it. And I said, stand up. And he's standing like that. I said, you're 99. He said, I told you I'm 99. You're going to pray for me or not? <laughs> so I touched him and he went, the cane went. He got up, he ran around the room and then he was so excited. So, so. He said, I'll tell you, preacher, I, you need help too, preacher. I'm, I'm going to be praying for you. <laughs> so I went back the next year. Here he is, 100. And he had a box of hankies for me. He said, preacher, I've been thinking about you all year. And I just think you ought to anoint these hankies and start handing these hankies out. And I just said, I'm just like shocked by this guy. He's healed. He's strong. He's confident. So I touched him. I took the hankies. I went back the next year. He's 101. He's got another box of hankies. And I thought, well, am I missing something here, Lord? What am I missing here? And he touched him. He goes down again. He goes back up. I'm thinking, okay. We go back the next year. He's 102. Here he is, front row. Preacher, how you doing, preacher? I've been waiting for you, preacher. I got some hankies for you, preacher. He said, are you working with these hankies, preacher? And I really wasn't. And I'm thinking, why is he asking me this? He said, because I'm talking through him. I talk through people to you. You know? And I said, uh, I said, well, you know what? I said, these hankies are powerful. I didn't ask if they're powerful. Are you using these hankies? I'm bringing you. 102, 103. And he was gone. He's gone. And I have to say that when I went back, his presence was severely missed. It was just not an empty chair. It was like, wow, that presence that he carried. Mm -hmm. He defied death. He made me realize from that meeting on, hey, who cares how old you are? That's good. 
You should want to be here as long as you want to have influence to help other people yeah. with your prayers, with your money. You may not have the energy you used to have, but you got prayers. You got some money. You can encourage people. You know, you can still throw a stone at a giant. It's the devil's job to get you consumed so you can keep steady pressure. Steady pressure takes you out of your laundry list at home. Steady pressure on the yoke. I get people that get wonderfully healed, but then they're disappointed. You know, the one guy, he was in Boston too. He was completely blind. He had no shadows, no nothing. And when I touched him, I could feel my faith return to me. He was cold. His daughter was so angry with me because I brought him here. We drove all this way, and, and then you do this, and you, you know, and he's not better. And I said, calm down, lady. Just calm down. She was trying to embarrass me in front of everybody. I said, I'm not the healer. I'm not the healer. I connect you to the healer, but I'm not the healer. I don't heal people. If I healed people, I wouldn't be here with you. Mm -hmm. I'd be at the hospitals, emptying hospitals. The gifts aren't a switch. They're a connection to the Holy Spirit who, de who severs as he wills. The moment you think you can do it, you're done. I said, but if, you, if you'll listen to me, and she was, yeah, I said, if you'll just listen to me, I'll help you. See, people, God's Bible says he'll give you power to get wealth. He won't give you wealth. He'll give you power to get it. He'll give you the information. He'll give you the connection. Deuteronomy 8, 18. And I'm trying to help this guy, and she don't want to, she's mouthing off. I said, ma'am, I said, can I talk to your dad just for a minute? Just for a minute. And I said, sir, all I want you to do today is sit in a chair and imagine. Imagine seeing. Imagine seeing your grandchildren. Imagine seeing your family again. Hadn't seen his wife in years. I said, man, I want you to imagine it all day. Thank Jesus. I don't want you to do nothing else. What, how much can a blind person do? They're busy thinking. I said, promise me you're going to do that all day. I said, your job is to get him in a comfortable chair so he can do what I'm telling him to do. And I'll see you tonight. And tonight you'll see You'll see. Because there's a seed I'm putting in you mm -hmm. that'll come up. Mm -hmm. No seed, no harvest. Pity helps nobody. Pity helps nobody. Thinking about them, nobody. There's so much pity in the church, it's nauseating. Yes. How's Jack? How, oh, dear Jack. But you tell him I'm, you tell him I'm praying for him. If that's true or not, who knows? People lie. So I go back that night, and it was very cold that night. It was near zero, and the secretary of the church called me in my hotel, and she said, Billy, that big guy you prayed for, the blind guy and his daughter? I said, yeah. She said, they're standing outside the church, and it's only 5 o'clock, and the service is at 6. And Billy, it's like near zero. What do you want me to do? I said, let them in the building so they don't freeze. Let them, <laughs> let them in. See, what he had, what he had, he had the faith, but it was all locked up. And he had to use his own imagination. It's like going, to, it's like going home and your wife gives you one, I got some chicken for you, and she pulls out a frozen chicken. <laughs> here, baby, here, I just bought that at the store today. Purdue chicken, frozen. Come on, somebody. He says, I'll break my teeth on that. I can't eat that. But if you warm it up. And this guy's faith, people believe, but they're so busy with life, they don't take the time to really get thawed out into the love of God, into possibility. So he's standing there. And I, 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 he, they brought him in. Well, when I went onto the stage, I, I just said, boy, glad, great to be here tonight. They didn't even wait. The daughter had him up standing right in front of me on the platform, right there. 
And she said, my dad's ready. He did everything you told him to do. I made sure he got into the right chair. And dad, tell him what you've been thinking. I've been thinking about seeing my grandchildren, hugging my wife. I've been thinking about going fishing. I, I mean, I've been had all kinds of stuff. And I said, well, about you? was Jesus in any of those movies? Was Jesus in any of those movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Jesus in there. And Jesus was telling me. And he's just, just going on and on. I just touched him. Just boom. His eyes came right open. Now watch this. He said, my God, I can see you. And then the, 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 the daughter is, Dad, re, re, Dad, really, Dad? Oh, my God, you are a man of God. I was a man of God before I even thought I was. I was a man of God. <laughs> now, watch this. Then his, his face sank. He said, but there's something wrong. I said, what's wrong? He said, there's no color. No color. Everything's black and white. I said, can you see? I see perfectly, but there's no color. I want color. I said, I don't have any color in me. I don't have any color prayers. I don't have any color. You go get your own color. He said, what do I do? I said, you thank him, you praise him. You thank him. You were blind. Now you see, but it's black and white. I don't feel sorry for you. Another guy brings his daughter to church. She's five foot. She wants to be five five. He brings a tape measure with him. Front row. Talk about pressure. And so they bring him up on stage. You know, this was in at Dan Vester's church in Fort Myers. Big silver dome. And she comes up on stage and she says, and she told me your name. She says, I want to be five five. How tall are you? Five foot. I want to be five five. Now you may be thinking, this is shallow. Well, people listen. Oh, some days I'm shallow. How about that? Some days I'm so shocked that I'm so shallow. <laughs> some days I say, I don't want to pray for anybody. I'm going to stay in bed and rest today. <laughs> God help everybody. I'm done. I'm not going nowhere for a week. Come on, somebody help me. <laughs> she says, I ought to be 5'5". Five, five. I said, you want to be 5'5"? Five, five? I said, sweetheart. And, and the dad says, boy, she'd come with her faith ready to go. I said, well, listen. And then I just touched the ball. Well, she goes under the power. Well, she's laying on the stage. Dad! Dad, I feel my legs growing. Dad! Dad! He said, oh, baby. Oh, baby. I'm thinking, wow. I said, get her up. Get her up. Well, he measures her. I didn't even know he had a roller until <laughs> she stood up. And he measures her. Well, the whole place is 2,000 people watching this. So she, he, he goes, oh, baby. He goes, oh, baby. Baby, five foot, five one, five two, five three. Oh, baby. Baby five four, baby. I didn't be five five. <laughs> and she said that to me. I'm about to be five five. I said, I know, but we got four inches today. If you can find another church in Fort Myers <laughs> to, that'll get you four inches, girl. You go. I, I'm not competing with anybody, but I said, you got four inches for free in a church. Amen. She said, I want to be five, five. I know you want to be five, five. I know. Go home and get the other inch. Good. The first stone that David threw didn't kill the giant. Now, Rick Renner, who's a good friend of mine, Rick is a Greek scholar, Hebrew scholar, very good friend. And I called Rick. I said, Rick, I don't think the stone killed the giant. Because when I read this, it says, and he threw a stone and it smote him. And then he got the sword and he smote him. And it's the same Hebrew word. How can you kill somebody twice? He said, Billy, the first stone didn't kill him. It brought the giant down to where his head could be cut off. Sometimes you get a, a touch at the altar mm -hmm. and it just brings something down to where your faith is. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's good. So in this case, she grew four inches. Go home and get the other inch. You got your blind eyes open. You go home and get the color. See, it's keeping people engaged so that you don't do everything for them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And they learn to use their faith and their, the weapons of their warfare that aren't carnal. And they do work. I'm just telling you a few stories. I could tell you more stories than you could care to think about. That you, you walk out of a meeting and go, well, how'd you do, how'd you do that? How did you do that? You know? I mean, I was in Toronto and I told the story of the woman in Pittsburgh who had a double mastectomy. Her breasts, 
the cancer left, her breasts grew back 30%. It was amazing. I told that story. Well, some lady heard that. She ran into the bathroom. I didn't know that she ran because she was in the front. We, this was at All Nations Church, I believe, big church in Toronto. She came running out waving her brassiere. I didn't know it was a brassiere. <laughs> I thought it looked like a straitjacket, you know what I mean? And, and she's, she's, wa she's waving this thing in the air, and she was saying, Oh, my God, it's back! I got it back! And I didn't know what she was talking about. Here, she had a one mastectomy, a single mastectomy. And when I told the story of the double mastectomy being healed, she went to the bathroom because she felt something going on in her chest. And she said her breast had grown back. And she said, I don't even need this anymore. I said, no, you really need it now. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Another man, he was, in, he was in charge of all of Young Street. It's the longest street in the world in Toronto. It's known as the longest street in the world. He was the number one policeman in charge of this street. He had been stabbed several times, sliced. He had been cut from his neck down to his family jewels, you know, and he was in the meeting. I never, never met him. And in all of my 40 plus years, I've never dealt with scars ever, ever. So I'm in this meeting and I'm moving and here it comes so clear. I'm healing scars tonight. And it was so strange to me because I'm used to the words that flow pretty regularly. But this one was like, it's different. I said, Holy Spirit, are you sure? This is, this is, I'm removing scars. So I just said it. Jesus said, as I see the Father, I do. The Father don't raise Lazarus, I don't even try. No healing. That's why a lot of people at Bethesda weren't healed, only one. He saw the Father heal one, he healed one. We don't understand that? That's what the, that's what the Bible says. That's how you deal with sovereignty. You can change sovereignty. You can affect sovereignty. But let's get to this story. So I, I, I called this scar word. Well, I didn't know this policeman's in the meeting, and he had this body length scar. He come flying out of the bathroom, and he was just shocked. He said, what happened? And he went into the men's room to, to see if the scar was gone. As he's unbuttoning his shirt like this, he looked in the mirror, and he watched the scar disappear in the mirror. In the mirror. He said to me, he said, what can I pay you? I said, well, let me, let me think a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, nothing. You know, sometimes you're tempted, but I, you learn to say no. And, and, and he said, I can't. He said, I just didn't think this was real. I said, a lot of people don't until they get it. Until hmm. they get it. We were at the Copeland's church a few years ago. And the, a, a man fell out of a nine-story building. He died. He was split on pylons. The lady fell on top of him, and she broke parts of her spine. And they brought her up, and she said, don't touch me. I'm in that pain. I couldn't even handle your hands touching me. She said, just, I hurt so bad. They can't, I've had how many corrective surgeries? I said, well, ma'am, I don't need to touch you, but I said, uh, how about if I just touch your head? No, no. I, I said, okay, Holy Ghost, just touch this woman, heal her, and let the power go through her. And da -da, and what I prayed. Well, then she just began to fall back. And the whole way falling back, she's wincing in pain as she's falling. And I'm thinking, what's the use of falling if you're wincing in pain? But she did. I didn't touch her. And, I, and, and when she laid there, she's just like, oh. It looked like a bad day at the altar. It, like, like the miracle gone wrong. And um, so I left the meeting that night and I just put my hands up like they've been Lord, touch that lady, that one that didn't look like much was taking place. This was thing was filmed for television. It was broadcast broad, worldwide. This was worldwide. So the next night I take testimonies from the night before. So I'm taking testimony. When I'm seeing the testimony, I'm like, here's this lady. She's standing there, nothing the point. She didn't look like she got healed. So she comes up, I said, well, how are you doing? She says, I'm here because I got a miracle last night. And I said, well, what miracle was that? She said, I have zero pain in my body. Wow. And she said, you don't understand what all happened. She went on and on and on. I said, that's amazing. And then she started to cry. I said, what are you crying about? She said, I don't have any money to give you. 
She says, you deserve all the money that I have, and I have no money to give you. Then I started crying. <laughs> <laughs> then we both were crying. And I put my hand on I said, Lord, why can't you heal a rich person once in a while? <laughs> you know? And I picked my head up, and I said, you know what? I said, look, I don't want your money, but I said, why don't you go back to my product table, take one of everything. I want to give everything I have to you. She said, who are you? I said, just do that. She said, but I can't take any more from you than what you've already done. I said, go to my table and see Beth Ann or somebody back there, and they're going to give you one of everything. So I, I forgot about it. She went back to the table. Who does she meet back there? Her doctor. It was in that large meeting, her doctor. He said, from here on, everything's free. She went down there to get some more stuff, and who did she meet? Her landlord. He said, you live for free. So they bring her into the green room. I'm in the back room just talking about the service. And they said, here's that lady. She said, what kind of place is this? <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, I get healed. I have free living, free medical stuff. And she said, then you just gave me a free Bible. I said, well, that's the way church is supposed to be. Yes. I said, she said, I'm just blown away by this. You know, when you see this, and you see this happening for real, don't let any testimony you hear ever discourage you thinking, yeah, but I'm not that good. Mm. Or why would, some testimonies really has a negative effect on people. Mm -hmm. It never happens to me. Right. Right. Never happens to me, and my breast still hurt. I don't have any money. I quit seeing things, see that's all that thinking again. God's bringing stuff your way to get flush out that bad seed. God's on your side. He's for you. If it takes doctoring and medicating for a season, I tell people everything's okay for a season. Robert Schuller, when he was alive from the Crystal Cathedral, I used to work there in the 70s for a little bit. And it, listen to me. He bought, I think it was over a thousand wheelchairs, but paid for them to get people to the meeting. They had no other way to get to the meeting than to come in a wheelchair that he purchased. When they came to the meeting, then people began to get healed when they were there. So everything is okay for a season. We just don't want you to be thinking that you're there for life, that your hearing aids are for life, you know, that, that your special glasses are there for life, dialysis for life. You don't accept any life sentence. Amen. You accept diagnosis. Come on, say diagnosis, diagnosis. Is, not to be denied. is not to be denied. Come on, say denial is in faith. Recognizing the giant. And say so you're coming down. That's faith. Recognize the diagnosis. You have a fracture. There's a tumor. Don't come back and say, well, the doctor said, well, he's a doctor. That's why he's a doctor. He's trained in that. And he knows what a, a tumor is. That's, it, that's what's there. So faith isn't denying that. Faith isn't calling those things be as though they're not. It's calling those things that be not as though they were. Come on, say amen. 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 You know, if you have macular degeneration of the eyes and you say, that's what I'm diagnosed with. And then you say, okay, here's where I need the miracle. What does it become? Your diagnosis becomes your target. Mm -hmm. You aim your faith. You aim your prayers. You aim your declarations. You don't walk around telling people, yeah, then you make a doctor sound stupid. The, the, the doctor said that I have this compound fracture. This doctor said that I have scoliosis. This doctor said, well, it's because he saw it. He knows x-rays. He knows blood work. He's right. I can't believe you're saying that. It doesn't have to stay that way. Right. Diagnosis you accept. Prognosis, never. Do you hear me say diagnosis? diagnosis. You, accept. you accept. Prognosis, prognosis. Only, from only from God. Why? Because he raises dead people. Yeah. That's right. If you ever get your chance to get a hold of a classic book, a guy who was my spiritual dad, Ralph Wilkerson, wrote this classic book called Beyond and Back. Say that, Beyond and Back. Beyond. It's a hard book to find. 
But he, this, is, this, this is the best account I've ever read in my life about people being raised from the dead. And he tells the story, and I was in his home with him sitting in his home. And this was his elder who died. He wasn't just dead, he was at the mortuary. He was in the, the sliding, you know, you pull the drawer out, a tag on the toe. And they had gone down, him and his wife, to the morgue to just see the elder that had served them for so long. And he said, when they pulled the drawer out, and there he was, he said, it was just, it was hard for both of us. And we sit there and we kind of thank you, Lord, that he served the church. He said, as he was walking away, and this is in the book, as he was walking away, he grabbed the toe where the tag was. And he shook the toe and he said, we'll see you soon, buddy. We'll see you soon. When he grabbed the toe, the guy said, <laughs> That's in the book Beyond and Back, Ralph Wilkerson. Well documented. And then he goes into many other accounts where it wasn't just resuscitation, they just weren't in a coma. These were people that were brainwave, clinically, no heartbeat dead. So whenever you can wrap, if you can, you know, you, you may have to grow your faith because everything out there. Everything out there is about supernatural, but then they have Jesus. Mm -hmm. Alien encounters, and Loch Ness monster, and <laughs> Bigfoot. Then you go through the basement with a Geiger counter. Oh yeah, there's energy over here. There's energy. Somebody died right here. There's, I feel the energy right here. And people buy into all this. But they can't buy into their Bible, written in red letters. Uh -huh. I am the resurrection uh -huh. and the life. Amen. Though you were dead, yet shall you live. Somebody better give God a shout. Come on. But see, if you start, if you start putting steady pressure where on your brain, on your hunger gene. Everybody has a miracle supernatural gene in you that needs to be fed. When you follow Jesus, you learn that money is anywhere, fish are anywhere. People with people that are street walkers, devils come out of them, seven devils out of Mary Magdalene. Legion had six thousand demons. Six thousand, that's what a legion was. Six thousand demons couldn't keep one man from getting to the feet of the master. Amen. Somebody better give God a shout. Hallelujah. So whenever you say you can't, you can't, you can't, this guy had six thousand demons, and the last place six thousand demons when it goes to church. Yeah. Well, the last place they want to go is to a healing service. Mm -hmm. The last place they want to go is to be around you, a believer. Mm -hmm. But he drugged 6,000 demons to the feet. And then that's whenever he said, Jesus said, who are you? And he said, I'm the unclean spirit. Legion. Mm -hmm. He said, you unclean spirit. Because he was living in the tombs. Mm -hmm. Defiling corpses. That's what he did. That's what an unclean spirit does. It defiles you. Pornography is from an unclean spirit. Mm -hmm. Homosexuality, an unclean spirit. It's meant to defile you. And when you get defiled, you don't feel like anything clean can come your way. So you live far below the radar of who you're supposed to be. Until you wake up one day and realize Jesus touches unclean things. Hallelujah. He changes unclean people. He saves I like this song Carmen says, he sang it. I have a God in heaven who saves, who heals, and who delivers. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yeah, amazing. I know it's 10 after 12. Any questions here this morning? Are you learning anything today? Yes, sir. Yes. So what's your take on the um, man that brought his son that was demon-possessed and the disciples couldn't heal him? Good question. He, he, you know, he... Uh, he, the disciples couldn't do it, and he said, uh, da, 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 da. and Jesus said, these kind cometh not up but by prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. And did Jesus go and fast before he delivered them? But he just told the man, this only happens with prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. So Jesus lived the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. He already practiced fasting. He, already, he was practicing. He wasn't saying, I've got to go fast before I do this. No. It was, a, it was a regular part of his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle is what will really create an automatic flow. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to get into the flesh to work something up. Some of the greatest miracles come effortlessly. 
because you're already carrying, it's in your bloodstream, it's in your DNA. You've tapped into the supernatural gene. Now, a lot of people say the same thing. Oh, my God can do anything, and God's this and God's that. But their prayers don't work. Could, could be in who you say you are and re recognize your results aren't there. The Bible is a book of results. Mm -hmm. It demands evidence. Yes, Lord. So it doesn't mean the Bible don't work. It means there's a breakdown somewhere in your reception of it. Mm -hmm. And you've got to figure out, okay, I'm not there yet, but how do I get there? Mm -hmm. Don't quit. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't get jealous. And don't get angry. Just say, you know what, this is, not a, this is not a suggestion, it's a promise. The greater works than these. No, oh, I don't know who I'm talking to here today. You've got to quit just throwing things away. We are here to cancel the cancel culture. Come on, we are here. That's what we're here for. We're here to confront a lot of this horrible stuff that's being said. But you're going to have to really decide to sign up full time. Mm -hmm. And then you'll realize, if you leave, I'm going to sign up, you'll realize where most of your mind is most of the time. And there's no reproduction of God thoughts. You have your thoughts. You may even leave here with some of my thoughts. No, but you've got to, you've got to get God thoughts. It, sometimes it takes a while because your mind is used to, that's why it's called stronghold. It has a hold of you in a strong way. It can be broken. Greater is he, right? right. Not greater is me. Greater is he. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. You want more or are you hungry for real food? That natural food? More. 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 Do you want a ham sandwich or do you want more Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost! <laughs> <laughs> do you want a deviled egg or an angel food cake? Which one do you want to... <laughs> Sir, back here, back here. You had your hand up, right? Oh, you did. You're scratching your head. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. You mentioned cultivate the anointing. I don't. I thought you just were anointed or not anointed. I didn't know you could cultivate or grow. Or you learned it today. Then you learned it. No, that's no such thing as you are or you aren't. You're anointed for a specific assignment. That's different. But everyday believer, cultivating, and when I say cultivate the anointing, you start out with the basic cultivating his presence. Presence always precedes power. Long before he turned the water into wine, pay attention, he was there. He was present. You don't, people don't put much thought into presence. That's why, that's why we worship last night, and tonight in the healing service, we'll worship that's where I get my strength, is in that worship. Mm -hmm. Presence. Presence brings power. Mm -hmm. Thank he needs to be stirred up. Yes. If he's not, then you're going to try and do the gospel on your own. No. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go pray for people. Have fun. <laughs> people don't want to really feel you. They want to feel those rivers. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, it's all about them. They're trying to bring their good looks into the anointing. They're trying to bring their good speech. They're trying to bring their beautiful white teeth. They're trying to bring their dress. They're trying to bring who they know. They're trying to bring, I studied under Brother Hagen. I stu One guy come to me, he said, he come in a three-piece suit, and he says, I'm here, I can't fly on a plane no more. And he said, I used to serve Benny Hinn. I've been with Benny Hinn for years. And, and he said it one too many times. I said, I know Benny. And I said, you're not him. Let's get that straight. You're not him. You're you. And you can't go on a plane no more. I don't need to hear his name one more time. I don't know that bother you. No, he don't bother me at all. You do. You're, you're using him. I haven't heard Jesus once. I don't care who you work for. You've got to quit thinking that that stuff that works out there does not work here. It's an insult to the Holy Spirit. He could care less this and that. All he wants to know is when I am lifted up. Lift me up. When high, I'm high and lifted up, my train, my presence will fill the temple. Come on, somebody give God a yeah. shout. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am.
12 years ago. The Mount Hope Church. You're You would have, can you stand up? Because I can't hear you real well. So you're from Mount Hope Church, right over here. 12 years ago, uh -huh. October, um, I had emergency surgery where I had half of all my female organs taken out. Half of all your female organs, yes, okay. Sir. And I was told it would be near impossible for me to have children. Near impossible to have children. Yes, so fast forward several months after that surgery, it was a Sunday night, and I had a dream of a man in a white suit, tan skin, and And the mullet hair, yeah. don't With half the organs. With only half of the organs. Yes, the Spirit Hospital has it documented as this is a, this is a miracle. Oh, God. My daughter, Victoria, that was the one that the Lord did the miracle. Her name is Victoria for victory. I believe in miracles for I believe in God. Oh, man. Do you mind if I get that story? Bruce, you want to help me up here? You, you, and Lisa, too. You, you want to, uh, can I get that in writing? You do tell everybody? Say that again. When you were what? When I was pregnant, I'd be in the grocery store line and I would tell everybody. While you were pregnant, because yes. you weren't supposed to be pregnant, because you only had half of the stuff. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Questions? Come on, keep them coming. We're, this is our morning session. Tonight we have a service. Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. For a long of time. Mm -hmm. What do you? What's your question? Um, suggestions when you're trying to minister mm -hmm. somebody that's weary and well doing. Mm -hmm. They've been to, they fasted and prayed and mm -hmm. been to all the healing services and had, you know, so many. My what I do, my attention, and I get that a lot. My attention shifts away from them. I don't. I don't try and get anything out of them that's not there. S simply, it's not there. The component for them to believe is missing. Look at, look at me, look at me. They have no wine, they're out of wine. So I have to take what's there, and that's when I shift to him. When I say, Master, I need, she needs this. I move out of personal faith into sovereignty. I tap sovereignty. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Some people just don't have it. They have a heartbeat for it. When you see the effort, like she's saying, I, one guy said, I went to Cirillo, I went to Oral. Oral did this, and Cirillo did that, and, you know, and I listened to it, and then I had my own answer back from that. But see, what I like there, what God likes is I, I ripped off a roof. I climbed a tree. 
I rode a camel. I want clear to hear. God does not like people that puts no effort. God's a, God's a busy about my father's business. God's busy. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't know. He has no. He doesn't never slumber or sleep. He's busy thinking about how to rescue this planet, how to bring about His kingdom. This thing's wrapping up. It's circling the drain. Where this catching away is happening. That's why when the, when the restraining force is being lifted, that's when more evil is allowed to come in because the, the restraining force is being lifted. The restraining force isn't the church. It's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's, right. that's why there's more lawlessness. People don't care what they do now. The restraint did not do that. It's being lifted. Oh, we could get into that some other day. But what, what was that? who was that person just asked me that? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would, I would, whenever you see the components aren't there, you shift gears quickly. Because you're going to try, you'll end up making them feel bad. You're going to, you're going to end up giving them more homework. Read this, do this, confess this, say that, you know, and then you're really making them feel worse. Now they, they can't get it. And now they don't have a real desire to go do what you want them to do. And now they're leaving there thinking, oh, wow, I, I went there to get a miracle and I got a homework. So you've got to really shift gears and say, boom, 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 you know. And Amen. See, that's where your main connection or my main connection is never with people. I, I work harder now with him, like before tonight's meeting. I mean, you really spend time just going through the process. You are who you say you are. You did it for me. You've done it for years. You make things happen that shouldn't happen. You're amazing. You're the third person of the Trinity. Jesus did it because of what Jesus did, Holy Spirit carries out. Amen. You just go through your process of what you believe and you, get, you keep it fresh mm. on the inside of you. It can't get mold on it. Mm. Not when you're in front of people that's live life or death. And you've got to know when to stay in and put a little bit of a pressure, when to back out. Mm. Sometimes you've got to leave them there and plant the seed, plant the seed. I'm not letting anybody leave my presence without at least planting a seed. Mm -hmm. Question back here. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. I have a, a daughter that I've been praying for a long time. She gets seizures. She gets what? Seizures. Uh-huh. Like grand mal seizures? Yeah. And They're grand mal, you know what I mean by yeah, grand mal? Yeah, okay. like every month. And they don't really know why. She's got it since she was little. And um, the last time that she got one, I said that it's a spirit of fear because everybody around her, her friends could be, could be. So should I be praying against sickness or casting out demons? Because we've been praying for her. Well, if you get around the demon person, they're going to tell you demon. If you get around a worship person, they're going to tell you worship. You know, people like me, usually we, people that come in here, you're going to have people come in that have a different area. And, and you've got to be careful. You don't keep sliding into somebody else's area. Listen, listen, here's what I would tell you to do. Holy Spirit, you know, whenever you're dealing with that, you, you just did the right thing. I don't know if it's a demon or I don't know if it's organic. It could be either one. You know, uh, all, all noise coming out of it, people, doesn't mean it's a demon. Pain has a noise. There's more deliverance of pain in meetings than demons. Do you hear me? Yes. Pain doesn't leave quietly. Demons don't want to leave quietly. And sometimes I'll just keep the audience calm. I'll say, that's, that's not a devil. That's, the woman was raped. She had incest. They, she was gang raped. They leave her alone. She, the, the pain of what happened, she, right. it's, it's pain coming that's up. Right. She's a good girl. Right. She got a bad thing happened. Right. It's very important that you do your best to not, because you start telling people they have a demon or had a demon, they may, not be, they may be okay in front of you, but when they leave, they're not equipped to handle right. that. I believe in deliverance, but I'm very careful with it. Very careful with it. It's real. It's real. But in your case, the seizures, there are seizures that are demonic. There are seizures that aren't demonic. See, that's why we discern. One of the greatest gifts that goes with miracles or healings is discernment, discerning of spirits. Because if you don't get that right, you can ruin a person. It's serious spiritual surgery. And I've, we've seen a lot of, we've, I was in a meeting, I watched spirits climb out of people. 
an assembly of God church. I won't tell you where because you'll probably go Google it. <laughs> then you'll get a Google spirit when you do that. Come on, say amen. <laughs> but I was just a young preacher and I was standing and these people just started falling in the back by, the, by doors just like that. And I watched them just actually, they were on the floor. I watched them crawl out of the bodies. I watched them look at me like this and then walk out through the, through the door. It wasn't something in a spiritual vision. That was real. I watched it. I've had them walk in my hotel room. I've had them walk right through the dresser, through the wall, and stand at the foot of my bed. I've, 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 so I'm exposed. I've been exposed to that world. That's what really launched me, so, so to speak, into another dimension of what people are fighting. And uh, I told you a little bit yesterday about the New York thing. I don't want to get into that because it would just, yeah. we would miss supper and everything here tonight, I'll tell you what. <laughs> but, but the best thing to do with that, honey, is this. I mean, if, I'd rather lean on the side of organic yeah. and disease that's organic, germ, virus, bacteria. Say that, germ, germ. Bacteria, bacteria, virus, bacteria. fallen world, a lot of disease. When they, when, they take, when they do deforestation, diseases are dormant in the earth, they're stirred up. Massive air tra transportation today, all the jets, we don't think of it. That's how diseases spread big time from different countries. We've never had, back in the Garden of Eden, they weren't flying around. Or, so massive transportation, deforestation, there's, there's so much in the foods, it's in the waters. So really, it takes faith just to really get through your everyday life. You should be a label reader. You should label what you're eating. Yes. You should take serious what destroys your cell. Your doctor can do this better than me, but what destroys your the cellular structure, what's your family history, heart attacks. Okay, how, how can you avoid that? That's right. Because so much of that stuff is diet related. Jesus left the, pig, the swine, the demons go into the pigs, out of the man into the pigs because he hates pork. You can't kill the worms. That's what a parasite is, is worm. So you cannot cook pork enough to kill the worms, no matter how hot you cook pork. So he left the demons come out of the man into the swine who then went into the water. Well, then where did they go after that? Well, then they left the swine looking for another place. He left that whole herd be destroyed because they weren't supposed to be eating pork and they weren't supposed to be raising pork. Because that's what? You might, as well take, you might as well get a hypodermic needle and fill it with cholesterol and just shoot yourself. And that's where the worms come from. There's, if the casket is sealed, I'm going to get a little morbid with you here. You ready? How many want to get a little morbid? If the casket is sealed... And you open up a casket and there's worms. Where'd they come from? Came from what you ate. Came from your diet. It matters what you eat. And that's how you can break a family curse just by what you eat or don't eat. That's where where was the first what was the first sin? Food. Amen. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. You're groaning now. You're groaning. Right, right. It was forbidden. Call it forbidden fruit, the forbidden food, but it was forbidden. And there's stuff out there that's all, the only reason it's grown is for money. I live in Florida, so I know when the cherries are in season or when they're from Honduras, where the pesticides laws aren't the same as here, or Mexico. I won't touch any fruit from Mexico. I'm not against Mexico people but I don't like their pesticide laws because they shoot past the rind into the fruit. They don't care about you, they care about mula bula. So even though I'm a real, I like those big black cherries or I like the raspberries. I'm a real raspberry, blueberry, blackberry, Kevinberry, no. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. But, but whenever, you, whenever you get so caught up, you don't care what's in, what's in what you're eating, then you're going against conscience, especially after I'm telling you about it today. So it's just good to be diligent, as much as you can be. Now, if you're in a situation out there with survival, I get it. But when you have more control over what you're putting in there, because the FDA doesn't care about you. If they cared about right. you, they wouldn't have cigarettes out there. 
They wouldn't have a lot of stuff out there in that food. How does that food stay alive on those shelves? How does it, it stay alive? Preservatives. So you're taking that stuff in and your stomach isn't made for that. How big is your stomach? About this big. Hold your hand up. Make a fist. Think about what you're going to put into that today. Come on, say, God forgive me ahead of time. Come on. No, I don't mean that to scare you, but I mean just be more diligent. The Bible says it's better to take a razor to your throat than to be given to appetite. I'm getting out of that area because I can see that yes. we had you right here ready to be healed. Now we're burying you. I don't want to do that. But, but I'm trying to give you enough information to just kind of get a little bit more diligent, not just the Word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. So intermittent fasting is a great transition. It's working for a lot of people today. You just don't eat food in the morning or maybe in the afternoon or learn to be led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. See, people don't want to be connected to the Spirit. It's too much work. So we're going to the Holy Lands. Took a trip in 88. A guy comes to me at the beginning. We had six buses. A guy comes to me at the beginning of the tour and he says, and he had a big cane. His, his um, Afro-American brother, you know, I believe his name was Barry. I believe it was Barry. I always get these names mixed up. He said, Brother Burke, I, I need a miracle. And I said, I said, I'd like to get healed here, Brother Burke, so I can enjoy this whole tour. And I was very sensitive. I said, look, sir, I said, and I, at that moment, God spoke to me and said, no, nah, I want him to connect to my voice, not yours. I said, well, sir, I'll tell you what you do. I said, here's what you do. I said, somewhere in the tour, God's going to speak to you. This is the spot. Whenever you get to that place, you tell me, and that's the miracle's going to happen. Well, Brother Burke, if you just pray right now, I can get healed right up here at the front of everything, and then I won't have to worry about when and where and how. I'll just take care of it right now. I said, I can pray the prayer of faith with you. I'll be happy to pray the prayer of faith with you. But the actual moment for your manifestation, it's here. If I want you to tell me when, you, when do you feel that it's supposed to happen. Just, just come to me on the door, wherever I'm at, and we'll take care of it. Oh, Brother Burke. He didn't like that. He wanted a quick pray for me. I don't want to spend time out there. Because, see, that's my time out there. That's my time. i got to get this done, that done, this done, that done. I come here just to get this done. I said... Uh, just let me know whenever you, when you feel it. I was putting him in touch with Holy Spirit. So where do we get? The bus pulls up to Armageddon, Valley of Armageddon, Valley of Megiddo. And he comes out, he finds me in the bed. Brother Burke, Brother Burke, this is it. This is, I feel it. This is where I'm supposed to get my miracle. It was, that was like halfway through the tour. See, my job had been done. My job wasn't the prayer as much as connecting him to the voice. So I went over and touched him. Man, he went under the power right there by side the bus, alongside the road. I had to help, had to help him to the ground. He was healed right there at Armageddon. God spoke to him. This is the spot. Today is the day. One lady called my office and said, can, I, can Billy see me today? i got demons. I need to get these demons out. My secretary said, well, you know, Pastor Billy just likes to see people in services. Tell Pastor Billy, I'll give him, how much does he want? I'll pay him whatever he wants, but I, here's the deal. I have to pick up my mother at 1 o'clock, and I have to pick up my children at 3 o'clock. Can he get all the demons out in that two-hour window? <laughs> That's people. That's just people. That's where they are. And I said, I said to my secretary, I said, what? They want to drive by deliverance and a pick-up miracle. Go take out miracle. They don't have any idea what they're dealing with. I said, bring her in. I said, I'll do my best, but some of these demons, and I say, come out, they say no. Some of them say, I have a right to be here. Once it said to me, I, I give this girl women. If you cast me out, he won't get no more women. I thought, What? So I find out he had made a, a pact with the devil. He would give him, him his life if he gave him as many women as he could have. He was trying to break Magic Johnson's record. 
people. People like the taste. People like the odors. People like the pictures. People like, 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 like. And they're addicted more than, the roots are deeper than they think. And it's more than one visit. What is it? Steady what? Pressure. What's that mean? That means being in the presence. If you can't create your own presence, then you've got to get into somebody else's presence. When I had cancer and I had days to live, I couldn't create my own presence. I stepped into a Catherine Coleman presence. And boy, it was a presence. You recognize your man, the temperature's up. I was carrying a 70 degree temperature. What's that average? I wasn't 80 or 90, I wasn't over 100, I was average. I stepped into her climate, wow. Man, the thermostat broke. You gotta get into people who carry a heavier temperature than you do. Be humble. Doesn't mean they're better than you. Nobody's better than anybody. Right? right. One guy, our service didn't get over till 1.30 in the morning at Carpenter's Church. He was, a, he was deaf. And I went out to get into my car because it was almost 2 o'clock in the morning. And my, a couple of my ushers was walking me out to the car and I heard this voice, Billy Burke, Billy Burke, here underneath a tree was this big guy who was deaf. He didn't get help in the meeting. And his, his daughter was helping him out. He said, I know you're tired. I know you're tired. I said, tired. I'm beyond tired. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. He said, can I just borrow your hands? Can I just borrow your hands? Just, just touch me one more time. I said, oh, Lord. See, and I just, I didn't, I didn't want to go through the whole thing. It's not me, it's him. It's not me, it's him. I did. He knows I know it's him. I don't know about this guy, but he knows. As long as that guy knows, that's the main thing. I'm not here to convince you it's him and not me. I'm, I'm staying clear with him. Amen. So I touched this big guy. He fell on wet grass. He came up here. And it was a little bit of extra that God wanted from him. God's not here to, God's not here to be your convenient healer. There's too many books written and stories in the scriptures where people had to dunk in muddy river. Climb roofs, rip off roofs, climb trees, give up their lunch. And you want a drive by, you want something easy. I'm not saying you have to go do crazy things, but faith without works is dead. Amen. What's the works of faith? Prayer, meditation, declaration, praise, worship, giving, giving. Well, you mean you buy a miracle? I didn't say that. You said that. I said giving. Sometimes you have to give money away just to prove it don't have you. You don't know if money has you or not unless you're willing to give it away. You can say amen anytime you want. Anytime you want. <laughs> Something's missing here. Yeah, good amen. That's what's missing. Here. We're about ready to go. It's 1230. It's 1240. I have. Don't you have 1240? And tonight's service is at what time? And where's the service at tonight? Right here. We're having a healing service in this room. Oh. How many's coming tonight? Anybody coming tonight? Mm -hmm. Right before we close here. I didn't even see that booth up there. That booth was foreign to me. Wow. Are you recording all this? Okay. So you have the story of this testimony here for me. Can you slice that for me? Rip it and say that I get it? I'll put that on television. Would you come on our show? Would you come on our program? If I send somebody up here, you'll just don't talk about the. Would you call my here? Would you call? <laughs> just say that surfer boy from California with the blonde hair. Pastor, um, is there any way that she could come up to a microphone and say it again? Because uh, everything's passed up there, and she may have. Come on. Come on, here we go. You've got to really do it right now this time, right? <laughs> and this was 12 years ago? Tw 12 years ago? Here at the, over at the Mount Hope Church, right? Yes. 
Oh, we, yeah, they want me to they want me to take an offering here. No, okay. Not out of that bucket. We, we've got buckets. Oh, you through. have buckets all over the place? Yes. So what do you give me this bucket for? <laughs> <laughs> well, can, can she do her story first? And then, yes. Okay. Come quickly. Want to film this? Who's filming it? Which guy? What kind of camera is that? A four? Yeah, it's a, it's okay. a Sony 4K. Okay. So, hi, I'm here in Mount Hope. I'm here at the Gilead Healing Center in Lansing, Michigan, an extension of the Mount Hope Church. And I'm here to talk to this girl here who had a miracle in one of our crusades 12 years ago. Yes, Pastor Tell, really, tell me that story. 12 years ago in October. So here we are back in October. Oh, wow. Previous to that meeting, um, I had emergency surgery where I had half of all my female organs removed. And I was- Whoa, 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 you had half? That's ovaries, yes. what is that? That's- Tube, ovaries, mm -hmm. yes. So told that it would be near impossible to, to have, have a child. children. Mm -hmm. Yes, so this was 12 years ago. I got Pastor that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And then fast forward several months later, and it was a Sunday night, I had a dream of a man with blonde hair. There you go. Shining, <laughs> shining blonde hair and tan skin and a white suit. And he was on a stage and I was next to him and then my face was on the screen. So I thought, what is this? This Lord, was in a dream. This was on See, a dream. don't forget that part of this. This was in a dream. God was what? Say preparing her. Preparing her. Say God will prepare me. God will prepare me. As he prepared her. Yes. To get my miracle too. Yes. Sunday night, astonishing dream. Next day on a Monday, and I the thing was I didn't know who this person was in the dream. Just right. very distinct. Everything that I saw about you was so distinct. So when I caught got the call the next day, friend asked me to come to this healing service at Mount Hope Church. I said, Yes, I'll be there. Who is it? And she said, Billy Burke. Have not heard of them. Don't nothing. put that part in there. Do not put that part in the video. <laughs> Googled him and the same distinct man that was in my dream. Everything down to the white suit. So I told, and hair, hairstyle. So I told my husband. She's really getting good at this, I'll tell you. <laughs> I said, we have to be there. So we were and just walking. I'd never been to a healing service before believed in healing, you know, believed that I would have a, a child, but the Lord was bringing it to manifestation that night. The atmosphere, you could just taste it. There was such a atmosphere in that place, and it was towards the end of the service. Um, altar was filled with hundreds of people, and I just looked at my husband, I'm like, how are we going to get up there and uh, usher saw us and came through the crowd, mm, walked mm, through the crowd, mm, grabbed my hand and brought me all the way up to the stage. Mm. And then we're like this, you were right before me with the microphone and you said, ma'am, what happened to you? And then there I was up on the big screen talking. Just in just your like dream, in like dream. in your dream. Yes, and I gave my testimony. And next thing, I was on the floor. I remember just seeing lights and wow. the whole night, just a heat, a heat on me. And I knew right then, I said, the Lord touched me. The Lord touched me. Mm. And that was in October, 12 years ago, Pastor Billy. And February 14th, Valentine's Day, I took a pregnancy test and I was pregnant. I, yes. <laughs> You can do a little bit better than that, I'll tell you that. Come on. Two daughters. Yeah. Two daughters. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first one. She so since then, you, so then you had another child. Correct. Two years later. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, th you know, yeah. thank and you. They flow in the healing. My, they, they lay hands on people and they are healed. And just miracles, Pastor Billy. We have a page for you in Victoria's scrapbook of you, pictures, and people will often ask me, like, who is this man? And I get to tell the testimony over yeah. and over. Yeah. 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 Is your husband, he, does he, he's here? He's right there. Oh, come here, gosh, this is a big guy here, I can tell he's a, 
Looks like a linebacker back here. I don't know. Yes. So he's a part of this, right? Yes. Big part of this. <laughs> and voila, voila. And her name is Victoria. Victoria. What do you think? What's your husband's name? Mark. Mark, what do you think about all this? Hey, only God could do that. Yeah. You know, I, I knew where my wife's heart was at, mm -hmm. uh, what we were believing in. But, you know, like you said earlier, you're hearing from doctors, mm -hmm. you know, you're getting that report, but no one believe in God, mm -hmm. and you know what he can do. And that time mm -hmm. comes, mm -hmm. be ready. And mm -hmm. you know, stand here in front of stand here in front of me, both of you. Give me this mic quickly. I need a worker up here quickly. Never, ever, ever, all the days of your life, should the Lord tarry. That's the key here. Should the Lord tarry. Never even think about money for college, for education, for any other kinds of training schools. God's always going to have more than enough money for every one of your children to be educated. Mm. Even, extra, even extra classes, even after schooling. By the time they enter into their field, it's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Why? Because their IQ is off the chart. Because of who they are, is these kids are destined for greatness. They are problem solvers for the world's issues. That's who they are. They are problem solvers for the world's issues by the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, give the mighty, mighty praise. Give the mighty, mighty praise. say to you what I said to those other people that you laughed about and you really enjoyed that I told them but today we have a few hours before tonight don't come in here tonight like a frozen piece of chicken <laughs> put some value and honor into what you say you want tonight remind God who he is to you what is Isaiah 46, 23? Bring me into remembrance, he said. Yes, Lord. God was telling us to bring him into remembrance of what he did for us at Calvary. Did God forget? Why do I have to remind God? He knows if we remind him, you have to remember it yourself. Just, just bring him into remembrance tonight of something missing, something broken, something you're after tonight. Nothing's off the table. Nothing. Whether you get some of it, most of it, or all of it. Press in. Don't get stuck in a good church all your life thinking that's your answer. It's what you press into. Use that good church while you're there. Use the sermons. Use the worship. Spend your grace wisely. Come on, say, spend my grace, spend my grace. Wisely. wisely. You don't get all built up to do nothing. Amen. That's called wasting your seed, spilling your semen on the ground. You're wired for great victories. I, I just feel that an entrepreneurial spirit here today. Ideas for business, ideas for money. Ideas to how to win your whole family to God. 
Mm. Come on, put your hands up. I know we were keeping you extra long today and last night and such a wonderful group. And I'm going to have Dr. Denise come up here in a second. Come on, say, Holy Spirit, there's nobody like you. You put up with me for years. My 70 degree attitude. I'm turning it up. I'm touching my own thermostat. I'm going to break the needle. I'm determined to be white hot for God and to move into another level of perseverance. You're tearing right now, but I want you to come to my house at my age in this season and do a miracle. Shake the rafters of my house. Touch me tonight. Touch me all day long today that I may experience your presence and carry the glory into that service tonight. I give you all the praise. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Somebody give God all my life. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on. Dr. Denise, I know you want to take an offering, but didn't we didn't we want to do some form of impartation here? Is that now or tonight? What did you want to do? We can do whatever you'd like to do. We'd like to do it. I'm sorry. You want to do what? What do you have? We could do that now. Or we want to do the impartation tonight. You do? Well, why don't we do this? What, what you learn is it's hard to get an offering from people on the floor. Right. <laughs> um, why don't we... How many brought a gift to give today? How many brought an offering? Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Do you want to do this? or? Here's the bucket. Let me get the bucket. Just close your eyes. Hold your hands up. I'm going to pray. Then they're going to put these buckets. They're going to pass them? Pass them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here's what I want to say. Here's what I tell people everywhere that I go. You don't know what battle you're facing in the future. The one thing you want to always be sure. Let me say it like this. In the natural, you don't know what battle you're facing. So you want all your insurances to be paid up. You want to be current. You don't want your insurance company to say, well, you've lapsed the payment and give them a loophole not to pay. You want to make sure that you have seed in the ground. 
I mean, if you're behind and you're giving, this will be a great way to catch up in one service. Putting seed, just so that you know it's covered, because anything you don't cover, the enemy brings up before God. He's not a false accuser of the brethren. He's the accuser. Why would he go the whole way to heaven and, and lie whenever God knows the truth? Pay attention here. Come on, I want you to learn something. You read your Bible, don't say he, he's a false accuser. He accuses you of stuff that's in your life right now. That you refuse to do or haven't done or haven't repented of. So it's important that you block him at the door. Get seed in the ground today, tonight, whenever you need to. If not here, somewhere. So you don't think I'm after what you have. If not here, somewhere. Get seed in the ground. Hold your hands up before the Lord. Come on and say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Everything you've given me. I'm a steward of. I own nothing. I'm a manager of everything. I need to be a better manager. I'm supposed to leave my children and my children's children an inheritance. Two generations. How could I ever do that? Only by the overflow of God. I give today out of gratitude. I'm learning. My faith has been charged. And I have two generations. And a national revival. And my church. There's so much on my plate. I can only do so much. I'm a limited individual. But my seed. Say it again. But my seed has no limitation. It can go deep and wide. Far and beyond. What I can even ask or think. I give today in Jesus' name. Go ahead, ushers. Pass those baskets. So we're doing this now. Do you want to do the put people on the wall and just walk around? Or you want to do it later? What about if they all just come up here Perfect. in a group? For it reaches, for it reaches to the high. Here's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to move this pulpit. Hallelujah. And I'm going to ask you all that want this blessing to come right down here to the front. <clears throat> Just standing here like a statue isn't going to do anything for you, okay? But if you're, if you're pulling on it, if you're hungry today, I want you to pull on it. I want you to pull on it. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. And Spirit of the living fall. Spirit of the
So before we sing a little bit more and before we pray, look at me, look at me. You're standing in the right spot at the right time. You are. And I'd love to say all, but I don't feel all. I'm just being honest with you. I don't know anybody that I'm excluding. But there's a few of you here that are excluding yourself. Because you want God to give you something, you're going to do nothing with it. People have clothes in their closet they don't wear. Kids have toys they don't use. The world's wasting away. There's people that have nothing. You know, God, God, here, here's an interesting verse in Proverbs 18. So interesting. In our world, really, it's the good looking. It's those that are favored with physical attributes. Money. Talent. Who you know. But Proverbs 18 says these words. It's the diligent that'll bear rule. It's the diligent that'll bear rule. We have to get deleted. We've got to get scrubbed from thinking we don't qualify. If your excuse is lazy, that's one thing. But God's not going to let you go to into eternity thinking you weren't good enough. Zacchaeus was too short and Moses couldn't talk and Paul was not a handsome man. When he showed up, they said, you wrote these letters? Your letters are strong, but you look terrible. Come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> so you got really, you got to really figure this out that you don't want to walk into eternity. I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't, you know. And no, 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 no. You may not be hungry enough. Yeah. You may not be desirous enough. But a lot of the people that I've worked with, Miss Coleman was one of them. She was accused of having sex with somebody and it was all over the news. And Dino and I are very good friends. Dino's a very good friend. And so she had to solve this. So she called the Pittsburgh papers together and hold a press conference. And she was going to talk about this accusation of sexual misconduct. They were all there with their tripods, their old-fashioned cameras. And she said, okay, before we get started, she says, I want you all of you people in the press to look at Catherine Kuhlman. Look at this old, frail body. Would you want to have sex with this old, frail body? <laughs> they went home. It was over. Press conference, over. <laughs> She knew, she knew she wasn't graced favorably. She says, what motivated me to give everything I had to him? And say, Jesus, I have nothing to give you. I have absolutely nothing to give you, sir. Here's nothing. If you can take nothing and use nothing, then here's my nothing. Mm. Mm. No, I don't mean you degrade yourself. I don't mean that you, that's not what I'm telling you, saying to you. But get out of this comparing stuff. Mm. Amen. It's a killer disease in America. Your credit score, your IQ, what you drive, who you're connected to. What if you're sitting, standing here today and you're destined to be somebody really, really that you never thought you could be? I, 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 I'm with them all the time and they, I hear that story. I hear it. Never thought I would, could do this. Hmm. I want you to believe. Close your eyes. I don't want you to hold your hands up yet because hands help me just surrender. Just, uh, before you surrender, I want you to just hand, keep your hands down. But close your eyes. I want you to really... I'm just going to pray a simple prayer of impartation for you to go here and do the works of Jesus. For you to go here and dream again. Did you get a piece of paper out, a journal out, and you begin to put down four or five of the things you'd like to see you, God do through you in your lifetime. If you had a million dollars, what would you do with it? Where would the first 10% go? 
One lady said, when I get my million, I said, ma'am, you can't even give me a dollar out of 10. How are you going to give me 10,000 out of 100,000 or 100,000 out of a million? Forget it. You're dreaming. Come on, I want you to get before you. You want God to empower you to do what? You want God to empower you to do what? To help who? Who's your target? You want to help your parents. You want to get your kids. I get all that. That's your family. Beyond your family bloodline, who do you want to help? What would you do? Who could you visit this week? What stranger out there could you pray for? Could you send your Facebook friends, all of them, messages all this week? Just tapping into a keyboard. What could you post on Instagram? What could you do this week to surprise even yourself that God has put something different into your oven? Something's cooking. The odor's hitting the house. People feel it around you. You're not the same. Refuse to let people keep you the same. Impartation means you're getting a piece of what's been in this room for the past couple of days and the next few days. Come on, say it with me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit today, today, I choose, I choose to, decrease to decrease so you can increase. So you can increase. I lay down my plans, down my, plans my dreams, my, dreams, my, aspirations, my aspirations of who I want to be and what, what I want to do. I lay down all the griping and the moaning and the groaning and the jealousies and the comparison. I have found out my God has enough. He's got a river that never runs dry. Come on, he has the unsearchable riches. I want to walk in that favor. I want favor to fall. I want the heavens to open. I'm tired of a closed heaven. I'm tired of all the labor. I'm tired of the hard yoke. I want that easy yoke. I want the heavens to open. And the favor to fall. Fall on me. Holy Spirit. Fall on me today. I will do it. I will say it. I will declare it. I will walk in it. I will do your bidding. I will release the glory. I will be dead to me. And alive to you. Come on, somebody in your body shout. Now, look at me. You just repeated a prayer. I like that. I'm glad you repeated it. Now we're moving into the impartation. Put your hands up. If you fall, somebody will catch you. If you feel that power taking you, just go. Just go. Let somebody behind you will catch you. If that should happen. Because now we're going to surrender. We're going to surrender. Just because you prayed a prayer don't mean you surrender. Surrender. Just surrender. How weak we are without Him. How in charge of our lives we are. Really. He needs you. He needs you to give over the wheel. Just like Carrie sang it, Jesus. Take the wheel. Can you surrender everything today? Can you leave, go, and let God? Mm. From your time issues, your friendship issues. Let your flesh know today. Serve notice on your flesh. No more pornography. No more. I'm done. No more hanging out with some of those people. No, I'm, that, some of this crowd here, I'm done. With what years I have left, which we don't know, if that's few or many, I'm giving my mind, my mind, my mind, that imagination that Billy Burke talked about, my mind, that secret weapon. I'm done with those videos. I'm changing my video gallery. God said I can be somebody. 
God said, I can do some things. God said, it's time for me to possess some things I never thought I could possess. I need the grace. I need the empowerment. Not to waste it again. Not to blow the gratitude and the grace that I've had for years. This time is different. I'm a little older, a little longer in the tooth. It's late. There's lawlessness everywhere in the land. I will be a light. I will be salt. I will be the carrier of that glory. I will not cower to personalities. I'll not blend in any longer. I will be a city set on a hill. I will be that bright and shining light. I will arise and let the glory. I will say yes to the Lord. Touch my tongue with that hot coal. Touch my tongue. Let me learn another language besides the one that I have. Help me get control of all about me and me and me. And Oh, let me point to the master of it all. The man from Galilee, the water walker, the resurrected one, the high and lifted up one, the one that's never known any defeat. His life was never taken. He laid it down. Oh, I am here today to receive that glory, that power, that who I touch will get healed, who I talk to will get straightened out. People that stand in my shadow will experience presence. People won't pick up anything unclean from me. They get an impartation of the presence, the power, and the glory. Come on, every hand up, every hand up. Come on, say, I receive right now the Holy Spirit. I receive Him without measure. I don't want a double portion. I want the new covenant. The Spirit without measure. I receive it now. The Spirit without measure. Me. Me. Fill me. Overflow. Move in me now. Let him move in you now. Let him move. 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 There's the power. There's the lady falling over here. Let him move. Let him move. Anybody falls in front of you, just catch them. That's the Holy Spirit. Move. Move. He's in this area right here. He's falling in this area right over here. He's falling right over here. His power's falling right in this area right here. It's the Holy Spirit. He's over here. He's right over here. He's in this area right here. Let him touch you. Let him touch you. I said let him touch you. It's the Holy Spirit, that power. It's that mighty power. Let him call on you today. Yield to him today. Yield to him today. He's here to possess you today. Unlike any other day. Unlike any other day. He's moving, moving, moving now. Come on with that, with your mouth. Feel me. Feel me. Feel me. Feel me. Feel me. Feel me. Flow in me. Move in me. Take me over. I decrease. None of me, all of thee. None of me, all of thee. He's moving. He's moving. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. That mighty, mighty touch. Lord God Almighty. As we lift our hearts, come on. As we lift our hearts, we lift our token of our holy, holy. Bring this girl up to me right here. Bring this girl here. Bring, come to me. I need a worker up here. Need a worker. Need a worker. Holy, this mighty touch of the Holy Ghost, this mighty touch. Come on, holy, 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 holy. He's here to do that. He's here to do that. Everything being cleansed, everything being cleansed. Holy, Lord God Almighty.
sing it real soft. Precious Jesus. Very soft, okay? Precious Jesus. Precious. We're so glad you've redeemed us. That you've redeemed us, precious Jesus. As we lift our hearts. Bruce, just to play the keys there a little bit before we sing that again. It's about the surrender. It's not about the song. It's about surrender. Where are you supposed to surrender? What are you supposed to put on that altar? You can leave here just being blessed by the meeting, but nothing on the altar. The offer is way more than money in a basket. It's you. It's you. It's you, your time, your energy, your plans. Who are you giving your life away to? Who are you giving? Who are you investing with your time and your life? In this modern age of technology, as I said it earlier, that internet can become one of the biggest harvesters of souls that we've ever known. I'm sending a message to my 3,000 Facebook friends today. That's it. Here's what's happening today. Just moving your fingers. And it shows up in their box. And the anointing is on it. It's not you. It's not your keyboard. It's not fiber optics. It's the anointing. It's moving in the earth today. Your own person here from Mount Hope Half of her stuff was taken out of her insides, her ovaries, other parts that, of the uterus. And she had a baby against all odds. How much more will it take to motivate you to tap into that same unlimited supply? This is not across the ocean. It's not in Africa. It's in your home church. It's in you. What you don't have, you can sow and cultivate it. You can create a new climate in you. A new climate. Paul and Silas said, this gel stinks. It's underneath the earth. There's no air. So we will sing and create a new climate. I will live in a reality of my praise not of my natural prison. Today, who's willing to do that? Who is? Give me this girl right here with the color jacket on. Come to me. Put your hands up. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this girl right here. It's not too late. God hasn't passed you by. The word of the Lord's coming to you again and again and again. You're not just able to recognize what he's asking you to do. But look, get ready for billboard letters. Get ready for Daniel 5.5. 5. Get ready for handwriting on the wall. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Give him praise. Come on, ma'am, right here in the blue. Ma'am, in the blue. In the blue. You in the blue. Hurry, in the blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's blue. Put your hands up. Holy Spirit's touching you, ma'am. There's just levels of regret here. You can't get past. You can't get past. You feel so silly that stuff happened that you left happen. You did because you got a big heart. But because you left it happen, God's going to use that love to straighten some people out that you could not straighten out. Come on, somebody give them a shout. Come on, give God a big, big shout. Shout, shout, shout. Holy, holy, a man in the purple right here. In the purple. Come on, in the sweater. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right over here, right over here. Put your hands up quickly. God hasn't, God has not forgotten you. He's heard every tear, saw every tear, heard every cry. Get ready for some suddenly breakthroughs before Christmas, before Christmas. 
Some stuff's coming to your house. God's showing up in a Federal Express truck. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Come on, give God a shout. Hurry, hurry, hurry. As we lift our hearts before you, I told you, I'm holy, holy. On hands up, say, I receive, I receive the, impartation the impartation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I receive it. I receive him. him. I receive the power, receive the power. and the presence, the, presence. The, responsibility the responsibility of a changed life, changed life. of new core, new core values, of separation. separation. I receive it today. I will go. I will stand. I will speak. I will declare. I will resist the evil of the day and release a wave of righteousness in the earth. I will carry the glory. I promise, oh God, I will carry the glory. Come on, give him a shout today. Come on. Come on. Come on, give him a mightiest praise. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know what's going to happen tonight, but I believe it's going to be awesome. I really, really do. Um, amazing. Where are you from, young man? This is your church? No, I pastor church. You pastor church where? Here in Lansing. What kind of, tell me your church. What's the name of it? It's called Live Again. Live Again Church. Live Again Army Church. Yes. And your press pastor? Yes, pastor with my wife. I know your name, pastor. Nehru Shoemake. Nehru Shoemake. I'm glad you're here today. Is your wife here? No? No. Wow. She is. Wow. Wow. What are you feeling? What do you feel here? What'd you get? What did you get? Surrender more. You surrendered more. You know what I like about that? It's so honest. If you think you're going to stand here and surrender everything, it ain't going to work like that. You maybe have good intentions, but she'll be, she'll be tested on that. Remember the Mercedes I told you about? That was hard. It's easy to tell the story today. But the day it happened, oh. As soon as she said I need a car, I went like this. Because that's where the title was. I thought, Lord, you would never have me give a car I haven't even seen yet. Oh, I, I would. I would do that. Yeah, I would do that. He'll do the unthinkable. Not just in what you want to see, but what you don't want to give up. You have stuff right now in your home that you need to sow it. You need to give it wherever you can. It's seed. Clothes is money. Housewares, appliances, money. It's a harvest sitting in your house doing nothing. There's people that have nothing. Just one hour from our house, one hour, hour and a half is Fort Myers. It's devastated. The beaches are empty. They cry all night long. Mm. They can't find people. Yeah. The poisonous snakes have been, they're, they're all over the place. The water moccasins, the alligators are confused. One guy told me he was over in a, one tried to get into a 7 Eleven, there was three or four alligators. They just got misplaced in those storms, that's what happens. So you gotta be tough to live in Florida. You gotta be strong to live in Florida. Amen. Listen to me, he has you planted somewhere here special to not be like you. How do you get successful? Be unlike you. Decide today that you wanna just give everything up for him. Who does he want you to be? Catch yourself. If you're lying, catch yourself. If you're lusting, catch yourself. I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. It's not supposed to happen. No, don't need to edit yourself on the spot. Mm. Not in here. Of course, you're going to edit yourself in here. Yeah. Out there when he hits you. 
When someone's trying to abduct your children or abduct you, they try to take you away from the location they find you. Why? Because they're more comfortable away from the scene. Right where you get tempted, that's where you fight them. You just turn your back, get in your car, go down another grocery aisle, whatever you got to do in the moment that you're hit. When did Paul shake the snake off? A week later? Mm -hmm. A month later? He shook it off as soon as it bit him. Mm -hmm. Come on, say, there's no room. There's no room, there's no room, there's no room for continued poison for continued coming poison. into my system. I work hard to get to church, to hear the gospel, to hear God. I work too hard to have it be stolen so easily. I'm going to build something. It's called the kingdom of God on the inside of me. Come on, give God a shout. Come on. Come on. Come on, give Him a mighty Amazing. I want to help this lady up here. Did you understand, ma'am, what was said to you? You got it? Was that right? Beautiful. You're going to be able to do it. Ladies in a wheelchair, why are you in the chair, ma'am? Why are you in the wheelchair? One leg that doesn't want to work. One leg that doesn't want to work? Okay, so why is that? What happened? I had COVID twice. COVID? Yes, I woke up on a ventilator twice. Can somebody get a mic on her? Do we have a microphone handy? She was on a ventilator, and she's still here. Two Wonderful. Times. Two times on a ventilator. The second time, I saw Satan and Jesus standing side by side. Really? She saw the devil and Jesus side by each. It startled me. It startled you. I guess it would. And then Jesus picked up my right hand. Jesus picked up your right hand. Which was tied down. Which was tied down. Because they tie you down when you got a ventilator. They tie you down when you got a ventilator. And anyway... They picked it. He picked up my hand and he said, You're mine. And Jesus did. Jesus, Jesus did. Mm -hmm. did. And I felt such peace. From that point, I, it didn't matter whether I lived or died. Yeah, wow. I knew I was going to be okay. Wow. wow. So now I know where I belong. Mm -hmm. And right now, I'm trying to figure out, I'm, I'm, I'm searching for, he kept me here for a reason. Because I have so many morbidities, I shouldn't have been here. Mm -hmm. He kept you here so we can all see you get out of that wheelchair. Yeah. I wish somebody, I'm going to give you hand clapping lessons. Come on, what's the matter with somebody? You know, I can take you to SeaWorld and the seals do this. Come on. <laughs> Like I said, praise God like I'm born again. Let God believe us. Come on. What's your name, sweetheart? Kia. Who? Kia. Kia. So you got oxygen going in there, right? Yes, I've had that since COVID too. I never had this stuff. Okay, push your back a little bit. Push your back. And where do you go to church? Right here? Mom. Put your hands up. I'm going to touch you. The power is going to go all through you. It's going to scrape your lungs. He's going to scrape your lungs. He's going to scrape your lungs. You're going to walk right out of that chair. You hear me? You ready? I'm ready. You sure you're ready? I'm ready. I mean, are you ever ready? I am ready. No, you ever ready. Oh, ever ready battery? Every battery, that's right. <laughs> by the Holy Ghost! Yes. Come on, somebody say, by the Holy Ghost! Let the power fall! The power fall. On, this on this woman! Power! <laughs> wow. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Come on, let's walk! Just walk! Don't even think about walk! Oh. Walk! Walk. Come on, get that lady moving. Get that lady moving. Somebody better give God a shot. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't be celebrating yet. We're not done. We're not done. We're not done. We're not done. 
Turn her around. Turn her around. She's still hooked up to that. What do we want to do about our oxygen? What do you want to do about that? Well, I want to get rid of the oxygen. I want to get rid of the heart disease and the low kidney function. I wow. need a tune up. Okay, well, you're getting it right now. You're in motion. So what do you want? Do you want to take that on for just a couple minutes? Help that, help Sir Pastor, help her get that out of her necklace here. It's all caught in the necklace. It is no secret, I'll tell you that right now. What God can do. What? What He's done for others. Come on up. He'll do for you. Arms wide open. He'll pardon you. Come on, it is no secret. Come on, what God can do. Let's walk, walk, walk. It is no secret. It's what? That's the first time I walked. This first, is the first time I walked. First time she's walked. Praise God. How's your breathing? How do you feel in here? Do you feel good? See, let me tell you this. Why do we do this? Because there's a rhythm to every disease, a rhythm to every problem. The idea of a miracle is to break the rhythm. Once you break the rhythm, the devil says, I'm going home. Come on, somebody. Once you get a little bit of faith in there and says, look, I'm walking across this day. Look, she don't even want nothing to do with me. <laughs> I tell the Lord I feel used all the time. I did walk across the stage. You what? You what? I did walk across you the stage. You did? I can walk now. Now I can try that at home. I mean, I can try that down the hall. Wow. wow. Come on, with arms wide open. Come on, heroes. It is no secret. What God? Where are you going now? I'm walking. What? 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 It's what? The first time I walked by myself. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Jesus, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to be walking by myself all the time. What's that now? I'm going to be walking by myself. Yes, Lord. All the time. Amen. Now she's talking faith. Thank you, Jesus. How you feel? Feel okay? I feel great. Great. Hallelujah. He'll pardon you. It is no. Come on, what God? What God can do? You're getting stronger. Hallelujah. Who brought her? Somebody bring her? You did. You did. What do you think of this? Does this surprise you? Big time. Your grand, where's your grandson at? Both of them. Where? What do you think of that? What do you think of Grandma? Come on up here, Come on up here. <laughs> They've been they got, helping me all the time. Yeah. What do you guys think of this? It's just like before she got COVID. It's even better. <laughs> 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 
Come on, somebody. With arms wide. Come on, heal prone. It is no secret. It is no What's going on here? What? I believe today is my day. What's the matter, sweetheart? I don't want to be because of the touch. Then I want to silence me when I'm not being silenced. Mm. I'll serve God. I'll serve God and the world. Come on, bring her up here. Bring her up here. Is this the daughter? I'm, who's this? Who are you? Daughter? Who are you? Sister. sister. Sister? Your sister? Come and stand sister here. Where do you go to church? Where do you go to church? In, in South Bay. We came from Indiana. You came from Indiana? Yeah. For two hours. Two hour drive. Mm -hmm. Yesterday she started her chemo. And she's had her chemotherapy? Yes. Yeah. So she's fighting cancer? Yes. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I think they want to remove my tongue. They, rem out. they, they, they want, want to remove your tongue? Yeah, but I told them no. No. The second doctor said, we are not going to remove your tongue, we are going to give you a chemo. I'm a believer. I'm seeing people here. This is why I talk about being continually filled. You can't get caught with this on an empty day. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than you have full. David said, my cup run it over. Impossible has to meet possible. Doubt has to meet faith. No way has to meet all the way. Come on, help me here. Yeah. Yeah. See, it, faith has been incubating in her all this morning. We're getting ready to close. And she said, I got to get this before this closes. She's sensing the peak point of her faith. You have a peak point. A vitamin has a peak point. If your vitamin has a peak point, so does your faith. Yeah. Your faith knows I got to get it. I got to get it. I got to get it now. The tongue will not be removed. The tongue will not be removed. The tongue will not be removed. There'll be no removal of the tongue. I said there'll be no removal of the tongue. Somebody give God a shot. said every with whole. Come on, say it. Every with whole. Nothing missing and nothing broken. No. 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 Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, give him a shout. the devil know that man your whole territory what you're assigned to that shadow yeah. not on your watch yeah. take care of who's in front of you yeah. and you'll be trusted with more
See, that corrupt, that's incorruptible seed that just was launched there just dissolved all the, incorrupt, all the corruption. Come on, it dissolved it. Anything rooted can be uprooted. Come on, say anything. Anything rooted can be uprooted. Well, we could just take a coffee break and get back in here. And... Wow. Who, who am I turning this over to? Dr. Denise or, or Jean? <laughs> Dr. Dr. Jean, right? Where's he at? Let's bring him up here. Just, just, come on, come on up, my friend. Come on. Thank you for everything here. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Come on, give the doctor a big gun. You want to close it? You want to close it? No, you go ahead. Okay. Come on, every hand up. We're closing. We're closing tonight, today. Gosh, am I getting my time zones mixed up here? This presence is on you. If I was you, I'm not you, but if I was, I wouldn't even change clothes. I'd be very careful about I mean, I'm being a little facetious here, but... Do what you have to do to maintain what you picked up here. If you sense you're going into a place that's going to put it out and get away from it. This is a little candle in your hands that you have the power, the power now to feed the fire. Yeah. Feed the fire. Yes, Lord. Yeah. God started something you today. Feed the fire. Say feed the fire. Feed the fire. Feed the fire. Goes feed it now. If you start watching something, no, 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 I'm not turning that. A song comes on, no, 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 we're not going there. We're not going there. Uh uh. Uh uh. Mm -mm. Billy Jean. No Billy Jean today. Jesus today. No Billy Jean. Come on, somebody help me here. Done with Billy Jean. Billy Jean didn't work. Come on, I'm going with Jesus. Bob, 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 Rand. No, I'm going with Jesus. Come on, somebody help me here. Come on, say, I'm going with Jesus. Those other names don't work. I'm going to circumcise my ears. Hot coal on my tongue. I sat on my eyes. I'm setting myself apart for a visitation that I've never had before. Come on, give him one more big praise. Come on. Come on, one more. And he walks with me, then we'll get out of here. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he says, There's another one I'm going to get right there. Boy, I'm going to get her. Get me, get me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Going in here? Where are we going? Straight. Okay. Oh. Get that door open. Get me in there. Oh. 